Big baby skiv. Uh, baby. Yes, big baby. Yeah, there we go. Are we locked? All right, cool. And our special guest, Josh Peck, is here. Oh! oh! Hey. Someone's Bacon a, number to Josh. No, I'm lying, I'm lying. Step closer. Sorry. I want it so bad for you, though. <laughs> it's going to happen. That photo is going to be insane. It always says Josh Peck. Like, that's just his guy. Yeah, we gotta get you, Josh Peck. We gotta get you. It would have been the big, the nicest gift if we just had Josh Peck on ice. <laughs> he does that, like he gets, he has like a rate. For his <laughs> yeah, he just sits there. Amidst surprises. Josh Peck being an Oppenheimer is yeah. always a fucking. Yes, I was yeah. just about to say that. Shock. He's the guy that blows up the bomb. Is he really? Yes. He's, He's the guy the that runs presser. the test. Yeah. The button? Yeah, he I think presses he is the button. that guy actually. That was Peck. I didn't even notice yeah. it when I was watching it. It's so out of nowhere. Roderick in it too? Uh, no, Roderick was in. Yeah, he, he is. Is he? He's in it. Is he in something else? Yes, oh, Roderick right. is. I'm getting a nod that. I don't know what. I don't remember what he's, he's in. He's a part of Oppenheimer. And Drake Bell was in it too, I think. No, yeah. <laughs> I think Drake Bell is banned. Drake? Something new is coming out some... about Drake Bell. Yeah, wasn't there like some pedophilia? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nickelodeon. There's Schneider. a new. There's a new. Oh, yeah, Dan Schneider. Drake, surviving Drake, Drake Bell, Drake Bell. Uh, groomed. <laughs> yeah, oh, surviving <laughs> groomed or grooming? He's groomed. Yeah. So he He's was the victim. Yeah. He, as of an MJ Drake kind Bell. of survived. pass it forward situation. Hey, Drake, the Drake Bell story. Because I think that Dan Schneider used to make him and uh, like Amanda Bynes like. Fuck. Yeah, for him. Not even. It's not even funny, really. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. <laughs> wow, we went wrong. Drake. It's, it's like kind of I nasty. Wrote that theme song. <laughs> All right. Should we start? Yeah, set a sauce, ass. I don't, exactly. I don't know if we. I don't know if we. I don't know if that's in it or not, but we'll see. It's <laughs> a little Drake Bell. So does it work? Like, does it get cut around like that? What do you mean? Oh well, we just haven't. We haven't officially started. Yeah, yeah, but if you guys want to cut something, we can cut anything. <laughs> I just. I'm just genuinely curious. Like, does it just go raw? Like. Oh yeah, it'll just be raw. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really. Have segments or watch. All right, welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is Wednesday, March sixth, I believe. You're here live from the old Yak Studio, and we're here with Laundry Day. Yes, yeah. wow! I'm gonna clap. I kind of want to clap. Made it. We made it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to kind of clap. Honestly, first, this is our first podcast ever. Really? Really? First ever podcast. First, first time being on the ones and twos. Yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's an honor to start here, I will say. This is like top level. I don't know if we're going to we're going to This is this. this is definitely not top level, but we appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> one of one of my friends, I'm going to shout him out right away. Joe is a big listener of you guys and he was listening. Fuck yeah. I just caught you guys talking about us. Hell yeah. He flipped out to me and that was really cool. Thank you guys for Of course. Uh, we airplayed it to the TV. We were kind yeah, of watching we, we the clip. Of that. He, he gave us the timestamp. We just Oh, yeah. That's what you got to do. Did you just X out as soon as the timestamp ended? Yeah. 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 No, it was a pretty pleasure. funny. I, I, I was giving them a tour of the office and they were kind of geeking out and they saw like the big case of body armor and they were like, no way. Did you get one of these? I was like, man, if you guys like this, you should have been here when Big Cat was Yeah. A lot more going on. A lot more. Or goodies. Yeah, of no, course. No, it was a pleasure to to suck you guys off on the pod. It was like uh, we're we're uh, legitimately, yeah, we're we're legitimately big fans of you guys, and uh, it kind of seems like you guys are having a moment. Like uh, I feel like we're not even the only ones sucking you guys off right now. Like Drake, <laughs> Drake's, right now. Drake's kind of sucking you. There's a lot of head. There's a lot of head. Oh yeah, you guys were on. You guys were. Uh, what Drake post you guys on his story or some shit? Yeah, well, we can tell the story honestly. But... That was a great night. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll get this for so some clips. I answer, think. Yeah. Well, he posted us on his story, but two days before, I was just walking into my girlfriend's room and I checked Instagram, and I just see Champagne Poppy followed. Him. And he's like, oh, hell I mean, yeah. like for anyone who doesn't know, like we're obsessed. Yeah. Like Love we Drake. waited to listen to for all the dogs till it came out. We waited not that night. The next morning, we were all on tour. We hopped in the van, ran the whole thing through, like notes, giving opinions about everything. Like, what kind of notes? What what notes are you doing? You're giving drizzy I don't know. notes. We were just saying, like, oh, I like, like, this is a little <laughs> bit more of a flow bum. Like, maybe there's less bars than there was sort of like a dark lane down. Like, we were in right. it. We were in the weeds right. with this album. Right. Aubrey's beat yeah, selection. He, he followed us. <laughs> so much. Exactly. Exactly. He followed us, and I almost had a heart attack. Jam texting everybody like Jake follows, Jake follows. Yeah, and yeah. FaceTime, we all got on FaceTime. Everyone kind of realized, and then Henry was like, "We have to message him." And then we go to our DM, and he had already messaged us, and he no. was love on our song, and 
Wow. We had a whole conversation with him. I mean, like, it was just like. Let's which, read it word for word. Which, which, song, <laughs> which song specifically? It's called Crazy Stupid Love. Yep. Um, which page. is just like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you and Drake. <laughs> no, but it was just like Francis random Francis. song on our album. And he literally told us that, like, he's been seeing our TikToks, thinks we're really funny. And then saw a video of one of our actual songs and was like, wait, these guys make music? And that's kind of literally what happened on this podcast with you guys. So It's funny that Drake just scrolls TikTok. Oh, literally. He Dude, was Drake like, so online. I don't want to like call him out, but like he was like, yeah, one, my boys like send me your shit. And it just sounded like I was texting Henry. Like, yeah, that's hilarious. So funny. That's so, crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, also, it's, like it was the blueprint of like a lot of people have been like, oh, you guys are a band. You're making music. Like, it's funny that you guys are on TikTok. But like, what? How does it really like how are you going to make it all connect back to your music? And we'd always been like, no, nah, just trust us. Like, whatever. We're just going to keep having fun. And then Drake was like sort of like the control like like the test yeah. of like that's exactly what we would hope anybody like to go through it's like just see a funny video and then like whatever either the next day or you scroll right after and like oh there's an actual song so like it worked out pretty well with accidental him. marketing yeah. strategy is yeah. going exactly. as planned yeah did you guys have a following like before the funny videos started taking yeah, off not like we do all of a sudden it's yeah definitely... but you guys were still like touring and stuff yeah we've been we've been a band since we were in high school so we we met in 2016 at beacon high school not far from here and we became a band like second semester of freshman year and by junior year we're touring oh shit um, in high school you were touring we're touring in high school and like by senior year like missed most of school yeah i was gonna say how did that work it was crazy um and then we graduated in 2020 which sucked for everybody um <laughs> oh yeah did you guys have to do a real spaced out graduation ceremony was, I was in was bed. Zoomy. I was on yeah. Zoom. Oh, really? It was Zoom? It was Zoom. Had it on the Down. big screen. It was, yeah. it, it was pretty lit. Toshi had a nice speech. Roshi. Who was, val was she a valedictorian? Toshi. Toshi, yeah. yeah. She's a valedictorian. I just want to give Toshi. Oh, oh shout out Toshi. <laughs> Toshi. Uh, Toshi, holy shit. I was shit. in my cabin. Yeah. Big ups to Toshi. Five minutes total. And then right back in bed. I was like. <laughs> pretty tough. Boom. That was Instead it. of walking across the stage, we all could submit like these essentially a vine of whatever you wanted a six second clip oh, yes. oh damn and i remember mine was i had a basketball hoop in my backyard and i just took the deepest three ever hell yeah I missed <laughs> oh no it was just sort of me walking off into the sunset yes. and there was 500 of those <laughs> <laughs> i'm weingartner so i sort of tapped out through like v yeah and in anticipation for the w i sort of i got back on but it was a pretty lame ceremony. Can I ask you guys a quick question about Beacon High School? Yes, please. I used to tutor in New York, and I got to know the uh, the schools pretty well. Yeah. And my impression of Beacon was that it was the school you have to take a very specific test for Beacon, but it is technically a public school, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how it's evolved over time. For us, it is a public school. That is right. For us, we had to like do an interview. Like it was like, yeah. full on like a job interview, where like you got everyone was held in the library. And then you got like picked out one by one. It's it's quite selective. Yeah, yeah, kind of. The yeah. impression that I was given of Beacon High School from other parents who may have had students who did not get admitted okay. and thus <laughs> okay. were quite ornery about it okay. was that Beacon kids were the fast crowd. What do you mean fast? The yeah, fast die hard. Like they the misbehaved in high school. Well, we were, said. Yeah, we were like the first or the second year. It used to be uptown on like 80 something street, 86th street, like yeah, Upper East Side. Yeah, and then they moved to this new building on 44th and 10th. And I remember like in middle school, it's like applying to college. Like you go and tour it and there was a line around the block with exactly the moms you were talking about and their yeah, kids. It's yeah, it's Everybody would file in. We'd all do our tour and they'd be like, Brady, I could see you playing music down here in the music program or like Sarah, like you'd be amazing in the theater school. There was all these like different little clubs that it was really kind of big for. And it was very much, I don't know what it is now, but it was very much sort of like artsy. Yeah. It's kind of fallen off. We've yeah. been hearing some bad rumors. Like, oh, really? The, Ansel like, Elgort go there? He uh, went to LaGuardia. LaGuardia. He went to LaGuardia. That was the other one. Nicki Minaj and LaGuardia, LaGuardia are kind of have beef. They're like, they have some beef. It's like the Gryffindor Slytherin. Kind right. Of I never even considered the idea that there is schools in New York City. <laughs> there are. There yeah. are. <laughs> There's actually oh, schools here. No, but it's crazy. Sora's right. Like, it is like the college process. Like, even in middle school. Like, you had to send out applications. And, yeah. Like, get selected. And, like, 
Because there's not just like a local school that everyone goes to if you uh, live in a certain no, area. No, you would get your letter. Remember? Early on, you get it's more districted out. But by high school, you can go anywhere. And that's like when Man. we all met each other. You apply, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Stuyvesant all... High is like the one. Like Stuyvesant High is like the, is that that's like the hardest one to get that's into? Like big brand. That's, that's, that's like specialized. specialized. Yeah. Funny enough, we have like a really, we have a really good percent Asian. Exactly. Yeah, very much so. It's just like you work for the DOE. Bro, <laughs> you are. Oh, no, I can go s- school applications all day <laughs> long, but I don't think that's what this podcast is about. <laughs> We have we have a really good friend in high school who started taking sort of like our photos and helping us with all the creative design and the website stuff. Her name is Camilla. She's a legend, but she went to Sty her first year of high school, and after the first year was like, "No way, yeah. I'm doing this." Is it just too hard? Pressure cooker. So well, it's so she's hard. A, she's Organic. Genius. I don't want to make it sound. Yeah, like no, she's a, no. It was not that it was too hard for her. I think she just realized that like she had so many other skills that she could be applying herself to, and like it was sort of Beacon was sort of smart, but it was also like smart and cool and like she was an amazing artist and like just wanted to do other stuff rather than like grind you know math yeah. equation henry did you you went there too yeah i went there too and it's crazy because there are a million kids in the new york city public school system i yeah. think or it was at the time and then we all found each other and we've just been like like this ever since yeah. holy yeah. shit yeah. that warms my fucking heart Magic story it warms my soul well you guys were all really tight and then you had your your drummer yeah, Shas. Ooh, what happened to him? Let's get Is that a sore subject? I mean, I we'll, give, we'll give love. Yoko it's Ono type shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 no. uh, okay. For those that don't know, we were originally a five piece. With, shout out to Itai. And over the past year, he just kind of doing his own thing. Like, I don't want to speak for him, but kind of found a new journey very spiritual he's nice with yoga right yes yeah, so that's, that's crazy his thing. He's, yeah. he's got beautiful abs yeah yeah oh yeah. my it's god like percent body fat crazy. delicious abs Shizzle. unbelievable damn i didn't dig that deep <laughs> you have to see his you read his wikipedia and it, it just said that he was pursuing his personal journey <laughs> or something we actually yeah. just noticed i should have read that as yoga but uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to go for more of like a Charlemagne interviewing type. Yeah. Right. right. Trying to That's about that fifth like, drummer. What happened with him? <laughs> yeah. like the, what was the post Malone one where he's like, what are you, care about what are you doing about Black Lives Matter? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah shout yeah. out to Itai. It's all love. He's our brother for life. And fuck yeah. Yeah, it's been like seven years too of doing it. So I think we got, we've all gotten to a point where like it's evolved in so many different ways throughout the course of it. And like just now people are starting to start to find the funny videos and all that stuff but like there's so much that we you know slogged through and did all these tours we did this last one that we just did driving all by ourselves like just the five of us it was insane and like all power to him like he was just sort of like yeah right now like i need a little chill like i don't know if i could be staying up till 2 a.m getting mcdonald's every night like busting it down and we were like okay that's cool. I'm gonna still clog my arteries tour every life. night. Yeah, yeah. Tour. Tour doesn't crazy. line up with his fucking his body goals. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. he killed it. We did the last tour. He was trying to do both, and it's really hard. Um, it's so hard on the road to be road like to crazy. do eat, eating healthy in any way or exercising in any way. I mean, you like guys, tough. I'm trying to maintain this physique right now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and it's, it's a difficult battle. Work. Work. It's work. It'd be one thing if we were all super on that wave, but yeah, I think it was probably hard because like just the timing of it all didn't line up. Like I have not gotten to that place in my life where I can crush raw celery and broccoli. Just no. We actually have a challenge that we've created where you get a Big Mac, fries, chicken <laughs> nuggets, and a McFlurry, and whoever finishes it doesn't have to drive. Ooh, <laughs> that's that's it. You just have to, there's no time limit. No, because nobody if you all finish finishes it. it. Oh, really? really? That's a lot of. You say it again. Lightweight, it's like it, your, that's a lot of food. Your eyes get bigger than your stomach. After yeah. The show. It's six chicken nuggets. Oh no, it's ten. Ten. Yeah. Go a ten piece for. Dude, I could finish that. I could put that so easily. I feel like that makes it sound. Though. Am I crazy for thinking I could <laughs> I think, put that away? I think no it's problem? more food than you think it is. Say it again. Say what the what the components right. are. Uh huh. Rice, a McFlurry, and a ten piece chicken nugget. Sounds Dude, like I I ate. I think I ate that like word for word. Like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? Yeah. Never mind. You we gotta get on the road with the boys. Oh, never drive. Get on the road with the boys and flex. Yeah, we should yeah. get out there, Sass. <laughs> That's crazy. That sounds like a good. Th- How do you guys rent a car? We own it. We have a bought one. Oh shit! All right, yeah, that's a good we, way we, around it. Like, I think on Facebook Marketplace or some shit. That's nice. nice. Where is it? Where do you guys keep it? Is it in the city? Normally, we like my parents <laughs> during COVID moved to Connecticut, Stamford, Connecticut, and nice. they're like now the only one of our parents, I think, or maybe yours now, but. They're like they were the only one with the driveway, so I would just be like, "Mom, <laughs> I'm bringing my laundry and the van home. Is that okay?" And they've been awesome, and so like they keep it. My dad, like when my mom has to use their car, 
my dad plays like paddle tennis tournaments and like is on like the tennis club team. So all of his boys like get in our van and like blare music <laughs> yeah. and pull up, like, do the sliding door. So it's at been, paddle, yeah, at paddle, yeah, and they it, intimidate. Is it like a nice way. like you can sleep in the van? You guys have like beds and no, shit? it's not it's like four transit. Bus vibes. No. We'll get there. Like a we'll get there. Passenger sort of. Oh shit! So it's like a uh, I know what you mean. Like a sprinter yeah. kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've put some miles on that baby. We've had some. We've had some scary we, moments. We got it there. robbed in L.A. Really? I tour. We finished the tour, ended in L.A. We were staying in an apartment building, and we got to park it in the lot. And literally the first day off we had after the tour, we get up, we get down to the van. And we're so excited. We're gonna run around L.A. Whatever. Windows cracked open. Bunch of that's shit. the L.A. experience. Did you really go to L.A. if you didn't get your van robbed, though? I feel uh, like it, that's it, kind it, of a rite of passage. Actually, it feels bucket listy. It feels like you need to have that happen. Yeah. But it really sucks. Um, like the underdog. You got, now you guys like the underdogs. So you're overcome. Yeah, no. Exactly. We, yes. Monster. Yeah. 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 Now we're here. <laughs> what uh? What did they take? What kind of shit did they take? Gear? I mean, yeah. Not ever. Not all the gear, but a lot of gear. It was tough. Yeah. But literally, the tour was over, so it kind of was okay that we could like replace it. It wasn't like we had we have like insurance and shit on that. Yeah, we, we got it all worked out. Yeah. It was funny because like right. we had so many guitars and keyboards and all this, but it, the job seemed so rushed. Yeah. So, like they just took the yeah. stuff on the top. So they took all of our cables and like the all of our guitar do with stands. Cables? And it was like, okay, <laughs> like they, they got some stuff too. Like they got a, they got an acoustic guitar that was so <sighs> rare. That, yes, that we really loved and like a synthesizer. And it's just like, ah, uh, shoot. But we did some good disguising though. There was, we kept all of our microphone stands in a guitar case. And I know some dude was just lugging that super heavy bag, being like, "We got a crazy the hall. guitar." Yeah, yeah. pulled it open, and there's yeah, just yeah. all like stance. It's weird how like I, I get robbed constantly. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> People comment that on other videos. Yeah. They're like, "How do these guys not get mugged every day?" I get I get <laughs> shit I get shit stolen from my apartment that like shit that I get like packages. What? Oh, oh, like oh, at, like yeah. weekly. Fact. It's always meals. yeah. It's always it's always weird what they select. Right. They all they never get like I I had a poster. That got stolen. I was like, what? Out of all the packages, why is that? That what? The one that weighs that's one monster. pound? People who yeah. love need to interior yeah. decorate as well. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's true. They gotta fucking put the poster up on the sidewalk, keep <laughs> <laughs> it to the ground. When you guys went on tour, were you uh, hitting like was it major cities or was it uh, like like podunk little like towns and shit no, we, like that? Was hit, it? We hit the major cities. The last tour we did, we opened for that band Neon Trees. Like you know the song Everybody Talks. Yeah, yeah. They were like doing their comeback tour very randomly and they had us come because the lead singer is a fan of ours. And that was really fun because they're like very seasoned. They've been doing it for like 20 years. Fuck yeah. So we kind of just followed them around. They're playing pretty big rooms like yeah. the country still. How does that go with with opening up with music? Do you just fucking like are people are people like pumped that like there's music happening already or are they kind of just like where the fuck is? It depends. It's yeah. a split. It's Tricky. a split thing. I, I, mm. I, I'm the guy that hates the opener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking hate that shit. Yeah. But I guess I should flip that a little bit because I should have some empathy for us. But I've seen openers where they're like self aware, where, where they'll be like, <laughs> like they'll like have a song about being the opening act and like yeah. how nobody oh. came to see us necessarily. It's like kind of, kind of, well, smart. it's usually it's just like giggle out of me. Filing in still. Exactly. Yeah. Lights are still on. Like with the opener for it's comedy, hit it's hit or miss. Sometimes the crowd's really fun and into it. And like we open for Claro in Europe. A long time ago, and like oh, hell yeah, crowds were just amazing. Uh, Europe, how was that? Where'd you guys go in Europe? Everywhere, like literally got a f not a free, but a a quick easy pass around all of Europe. That's awesome for three weeks. It was amazing. It was really really cool. Um, and yeah, those those fans are insane. And then obviously, like for us, New York is our favorite spot. We just love playing here. Does the headlining act determine the the fee that you guys get, or does the venue? Uh, a lot of Honestly, times, musicians and business. <laughs> don't don't, like, don't I work. Doubt they even knew what we got paid. They don't. Yeah, it. a lot of times it's also like a set rate. It's sort of like, especially with the Claro tour, and then also this Neon Tree tour. Like the opportunity to play in front of all those people is so great. So you're not really worried about. I mean, it's sort of like a, a flat rate every night of a certain show. Live Nation just started doing this thing <laughs> when we were finishing our tour. Where like, like they did this Willie Nelson themed like whatever some sort of like promo so they would give every artist who played a certain level of venue which was like a thousand capacity or something whether you're opening whether you were headlining whatever they give you 750 bucks a night 
in cash and 750 bucks a night in gas money on top of whatever yes. else you were already getting. Yeah, so we were like, heard money. about these gas We were riding around with like 4K and just straight shell gas, just like pl- plummeting through. Yeah. That's Idaho. a shit ton of gas. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. Like, we have like a stack still so with, much. wrapped in a rubber band of just shell cards. That's we, crazy. Julio yeah. just opened for Matt Friend at the Gramercy Theater and it was yeah. a Live Nation show and he half his pay was in gas. Yeah, cards. literally. That's literally. crazy. That's what happened to us. It was insane. Shout out Matt Friend real quick. Yeah. You know him? Yeah, the imp- sure. that's the, the guy who does impressions. the impressions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's crazy. His impressions nice. are so good. Yeah, it's really Howard good. It's Hollywood now, too. Yeah. I like seeing the trajectory yes. of, like, TikToker to red carpet. Yeah. yeah. The Oscars are on Sunday. He'll be on the red carpet. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah he will be. He'll be interviewing Killian Murphy. Yeah, he'll do he'll that. Like, he'll, like, try to do a Killian Murphy. Do his Jeff Murphy. Goldblum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He'll do Stanley Tooch. Yeah, the Jeff, yeah, the Jeff Goldblum is one of the yeah, faves. Jeff is so good. It's weird. I, I've, like, I've known him for a while from just stand-up, and, and then I was watching, I was, like, New Year's Eve, I was watching TV, and then all of a sudden he was, like, on the main channel yeah. doing yeah. impressions for the fucking people. Like Seacrest and shit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Seacrest is just wasted out of his mind. <laughs> You're like, it's really good, dude. It's really funny. <laughs> it- that sounds just. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Is he here right now? <laughs> he doesn't know what an impression is. <laughs> I don't think we ran the New Year's screen, uh, live show this year. We didn't have a TV yeah. at the crib this year. I don't think it was a TV. Not missing part. much. Yeah, no. Yeah. I forgot. The secret. big thing this year was that it it struck midnight, and then they panned the camera over to two gay dudes making out, and people were like, "No fucking way! <laughs> Turn that shit off now!" Not how I'm starting my 2024. <laughs> but they just have no idea that Anderson Cooper and yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Andy Cohen are are gay. Yeah, that's like they had no idea. They had no the idea. Fuck. Oh, it wasn't bad. Uh, but... Yeah, would have been awesome. That would have been amazing. Does Ryan broken. Seacrest just wait every year until New Year's, or does he like do other shit? Like, does he? I don't know. I've only year? seen him do New Year's Same. ever. He's just in a chamber. He did. Yeah. He was American Idol, right? Yeah. I never watched him. I don't think he's doing that anymore. I feel oh, no. like American Idol is like purely on TikTok right. now. No, no, I actually watched Is the it... first episode a couple weeks ago. Hey, oh, really? Did. Yeah, I really, I really did. It's, Laura it's Katy everything. Perry. It's Katy Perry, Lionel, of course, and then Lionel. my guy. Who's the other one? Luke Bryan or Luke something? Bryan. I forget who hosts it, though. It's not Nick Lachey. That was the other show. Love is Blind is, is Nick blind. Lachey now. Well, there's so many of those singing shows now. The vo- Is The Voice still big? Yes. Of course. Still going. The Voice was good. I used to watch that. Did you guys ever do... I mean, maybe you're probably past past it now, but would you ever do something like America's Got Talent? Or I auditioned that was for my that, shit. funny yeah, enough. That was my shit. I auditioned for America's Got Talent, like the pre-audition audition. Like, I did, before I did you that act- Yeah, before you actually do it, you go into some you rehearsal room. Yeah, I got passed through. I played like Ed Sheeran or something. I was like, let's go. And they were like, yeah, no, it's no. not going to work out. And I was like, sort of dodged a bullet, but I always wonder, like... It seems cool, but I also f- have heard that like you have to sign like a crazy deal or whatever, or, like whatever AGT owns you for the next like six. Oh, years. they own your soul. Own your you have to go to Bohemian to Grove and like watch really? atrocities happen. Oh, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's nasty. It was a strange experience when I did it. Yeah, what was we your experience? To Queens, like? okay. some college, and you get there at six thirty in the morning, and the line is already like four hundred people le- deep, and. There are families there with, you know, 12 aunts and uncles, parents, grandparents, <laughs> all for some four year old wearing a cheerleading outfit, yeah. and full makeup. And they're, you're like, are they betting the entire farm? <laughs> that piece of shit girl. That girl Don't fuck sucks. this up, Lucy. <laughs> I just walk and then and then there you get into this sort of open atrium. I don't know if you same thing for you, but like people are warming up and bonding and and doing their <laughs> shit. So there's like a dance circle, and then there's people juggling, and then there's a couple singers doing vocal warm ups, and everybody's very convivial and pretending to root each other on. Right. But there's like some dancers that are incredible, right? Dancing next to people who you're like. You should leave now. So yeah. Save time. Wasting must, your day. Oh, they You're dancing that. with people that are dismissing you on a talent level. Surely. You're the joke here. You don't realize it, but you're the comedic relief. You have so much more paperwork to do. Like, go home. Get a job at a bodega. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just... I, don't I feel know. like they're probably... I feel like some people are banking on the fact that they're just like a freak, right? Isn't that like half of America's... Like, to, to get half, through to the... Half the some of yeah. the bad people get on. Yeah, because they're... They're like, oh, this guy's gonna cause a scene. Let's get yeah. him in the audition. It's all like, it's all for the entertainment of yeah, it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you're good, like, I bet Sora was great, but it just wasn't. Yeah, they're like, well, yeah, he's not right. gonna. I was yeah. super puberized. So I was kind of towing the line of right. the vocal change going in there. But I was. Uh, they're either looking for some young kid who's like 
talented for his age or someone who's going to like cry. Yeah. And like, or like try, William Hung, Howie Mandel, like a veteran, but like also a veteran like in that yeah. troubles now. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Because on the episode, they do like the whole backstory. It's still like, something to go. No, I, I think people want. A juggling veteran. Yes. <laughs> juggling yes. veteran. I quickly so realized. Veteran who you know what I mean? Like, they'll yeah, they'll, they'll highlight. They, they highlight people every episode. They were yeah. really trying to find something. Because I got passed through the, the. They put you in a classroom. And there's like 12 of you. And you each get a minute or two. And after that, people are let go. And they're like, all right, we're going to let you know in two weeks. And then most of the class filed out or whatever. When they he grabbed me and one other guy. was like, hold on one second. And I actually thought I was in trouble. <laughs> right. I was like, did I say the N word in my ass? <laughs> I got blacked I out. Got I, I, I surely did. didn't. Uh, and then, and then they get, they say like, come with me and they walk you through to like an actual set. Yeah. Big cameras and lights. And now it's serious. But before that, they do like a pre-interview where they were like, wow. on your packet, you wrote down like your favorite person is your dad or yeah, something. Yeah. Did he ever? Is he dying? Kill someone? <laughs> you know, dying. surely he touched you. <laughs> like, and you overcame that, which is where your sense of dark humor comes from. And they want, they want cracks or yeah, exactly. you know exactly. problems or whatever. And I just, what'd you go on with? Just like some songs? No, I just did stand up. Did you really? Yeah. Uh, and did you have like what was your plan if you went on? Because wouldn't you need like a new like five minutes every time, every like show, know. every I mean, episode, every audition? This was before Barstool, and I I I got, went to that second part of the audition, and this time it was like there was a camera the size of a you know fire hose. It was huge, and uh, and then there was a panel of like six really official producers sitting behind a table and a, a mark and this time you had instead of like two minutes now you had four and they were like come in and i went in and and i didn't know i had prepared two minutes yeah so all of a sudden just same day i had to like come up with another two minutes of clean stuff and i was never gonna get farther than that <laughs> <laughs> what's it like writing stand-up i've always wondered this like the process is it just like notes app like yo that's good like yeah pretty much from there yeah, that's pretty much. That's actually exactly what it is. <laughs> you have like a list of just people you test it out with. Like, no, the, you gotta no. go. You gotta go. To yeah, because it doesn't. Also, any jo my best jokes if I told them to one of you guys right now, in just like a normal voice and like without right. a crowd, you'd be like, "No, that's not funny at all. That sucks." We went to the worst comedy show. Like, yeah, we really? Weeks ago, we just like stumbled into one. Was it? Yeah. Really Anytime show, you're stumbling was, into that, it's like a workshop. Like, <laughs> like, everyone there was like other. Like fellow comedians, like yeah, yeah. It was an open mic. mic. Huh? Went to an open mic. I guess, yeah. Yeah. But we were probably the only people there to just watch it. Was this the Grizzly Pear? No, no I don't want. What was it called? It was in like Hell's Kitchen. I don't know. We were just. Was it the Producers Club? Yes, I think it was. Yes. Really? <laughs> That's where I started. Yeah, it's, I started okay. there. Well, it's well, terrible. Like little room next uh, to the bar. Yeah, that place is a fucking was, nightmare. Was crazy. That place like, was the crazy. Worst <laughs> jokes. Dude, Dude, the array of different place, styles. That like, place is so who is bad. Super like non fucking like really vulgar. Yeah. To then someone doing like sort of notebook jokes, trying to find my person. Kind like it was. Yeah. yeah. It was all over. Is there the a place. dude with like a Mets jersey who is like shit face. Oh, there's a dude with a full. It was like a top ramen hoodie. sweater. It was like the whole hoodie was like, Printed on, like ramen. I've seen that jumpsuit. Ramen. It was crazy. It was like a full on thing. Was anybody making you laugh? Was there anybody who was like... One yeah. There was we some like laugh. orthodox Jewish guy that was pretty funny. Also, yeah. it was like situationally funny. Like I think yeah. I respected everybody because they were all characters and they went out there and like put themselves up there. Absolutely. And just sometimes the couple laughs or the deadness of the room would just make you laugh anyway. Yeah, that's all, sometimes is equally funny watching someone like eat shit kind of. No, exactly. that that place it's like not it's like not even like oh this guy's bombing this is funny it's like it's so uncomfortably bad yeah right. <laughs> so how do you like overcome sad. like how do you get to the next level from there the same thing. Uh, you just wait for a crowd of people like you guys to come like that was like the only time i ever got a laugh was when some girl was doing open mic and brought like 10 friends and i'd had like a good set and I left and I was like, I'm the best to ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then how did you book your next? Like, how did you have the confidence? I just had someone that? I was at. I was at the stand for something. I think I was watching a show there and some this guy, Jared Schwartz, came up to me and was like, do you want to do my show? Oh, really? Yeah. All it takes. And that launched you? We respect you guys, though. It's and then after that, it's just been, I mean, it's just been history since then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
in the, it's in the textbooks. We'll read about it. Einfeld, Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we've, we've covered stand-up, so I think that's probably all we need to do today. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we find you guys? <laughs> yeah, no, we're opening for Sass right of the Stand next week. <laughs> <laughs> the Producers Club is hilarious. I can't believe that's where you guys went. I don't even know. How did you guys even? I remember I went there for the first time. I couldn't find it. How did you guys well, stumble into that We were trying to place? find a movie theater to screen this documentary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, very casually plugging. Um, <laughs> Your guys' documentary. Yeah, we made a documentary about our last album. We were trying to find somewhere to put it on. And like that wasn't that expensive. And that yeah. ended up being a prospect. We didn't end up going there. We found another spot. But it was a cool spot. And then after we checked out the theater, we just walked down and stumbled into it. Um, but yeah, we just did a screening at like Angelica Village East. Oh, dude, there. I'm going I'm going to go see Dune at the Angelica. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Excited like the, about it. Uh, that big room's going to be sick. Yeah, the big it was one of the smaller like so side good. rooms. You can have a beer with your movie. You oh, you can, you can have an IPA with you your movie. I like that. can't see through the beer with your movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to I've heard Dune's to crazy. Side people. I've heard Dune is great. I've heard like Dune 2 is like That's what I've, that's what upper echelon. I just found out there was a like a 1980s one. Yep. There was like a first one that I had no idea. Kevin bacon i think and i was watching like it was like a tiktok of like right. the old scene of like the sandworm and the new one and they were like comparing the different is austin butler the sandworm <laughs> yes <laughs> no i think it's austin reeves actually so. yeah the basketball oh, player yeah. Yeah. Is yes. the <laughs> yeah. that sawyer's look like austin reeves i don't I, I think the one that's more spot on is connor roy or earlier connor roy from ferris bueller's yes. day off what's his I like name? that i forget his name Ferris's Cameron? friend. Cam yeah, Cameron, but like the guy's name. What's I his forget name? what his name is. Forget he was in something that I just watched recently. Like, and he's old. And he's it. gotten older, yeah. As yeah. time has passed, he's Literally gotten older. He's gotten old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking jarring. Guys, fucking... I'm going to have to revise. I, I don't think Kevin Bacon was in the original Dune. Who was it? Patrick Stewart? Okay. Oh, no. Ding? Oh. Sting. Oh. Sting. Sting? 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 Apparently Sting missing. was in it, or maybe he did the soundtrack. Nope, he's got a character, it looks like. Oh, wow. And then a whole bunch of people I've never heard of. Sting There's rules. a movie with Kevin Bacon that has worms in the sand. Premer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I movie's fucking my, sweet, too. What is that called? Lord. Might be called Tremors. Tremor? I don't think I've seen a single movie with worms in the sand, unfortunately. Yeah. What about Starship Troopers? Doesn't that have uh, worms in the sand? Have you seen it that? is called Tremors. Dude, Dude that movie rules. And it does have Kevin Bacon. Wow. All right. It's just about, it's literally about worms in the sand. That's right. That's when the whole out? movie. What was the like 19, like eight. That was 1990. Okay. So young, younger bacon. Young, yeah, it was a young. Hot bacon. Hot bacon. Raw. Smoking Sizzling hot bacon. Oh my <laughs> God. I've been watching a, a, sh a show called Rome. It came out in like 2004 on HBO, but uh, you look like um, Brutus from that show. Every time I watch the show, it doesn't do anything for anyone, but it just has been weighing on my mind. Every time I watch the show, I'm like, Fucking Sawyer right here. There you go. How often do you think about the Roman Empire? Uh, Dude, I mean, now that I'm watching the show, like probably like 12 times a day. Yeah. It's well, crazy. I never that understood that trend. Yeah, I hate it uh, either. Never. Not never once. thought about it. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, well, that was my first time it. ever thinking about the Roman Empire. Yeah, I don't even really know what it is still. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I just know it. everyone's thinking about it. You <laughs> probably think about it a lot. I don't. You don't? No. You're like a history guy. I like history. I don't like that period. Why? What do you have against that period? <laughs> I don't know. I like later history. Yeah, I like America. Like, I'm I like, like suits uh, and stuff and like machines. It got yeah. boring there in the middle for a while. I like yeah. Jesus Christ and now. <laughs> that was Jesus yeah. Christ time, though. That was exactly uh, was Jesus Christ time. It might have been. <laughs> it was exactly to the to the year Jesus Christ time. Really? Damn it. Is he in the show? Is there like a no, subtle but Jesus there's a there's a look alike though. There's a dude who looks exactly like him, but he's the king of the Gauls, not the king of the Jews. I don't is know. Is it like that. a is it like a Game of Thrones vibe, or is it? More it is, but it's like uh, it's the real story of uh, the fall of Rome. It's kind of sweet. I've been yeah, watching it on airplanes. Are you guys are you guys all single? No, we're actually all dating people. Oh, okay, that's okay. great. Yeah. I was gonna say it must be fun to be 22 years old riding around in a van with your buddies touring. And you're probably up to your elbows. The, funny enough, you mentioned <laughs> that there's you know there's what? a lot of there's a lot of actually really specific your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> you're up to your elbow, boys. You're up to your elbows. There's a lot of really specific rules, especially when you play the college shows about like when you can be on campus, where you can be getting off at a certain time. Because I'm sure they're expect. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. here come four dudes in a van. Yeah, I can roll away at any time. You know what I mean? So I also think. I don't know. Since we've been doing it from a young age, I think we've all just sort of gotten pretty good at maintaining a level of like, okay, this is work and like these are the fans and like 
this could end, especially when we were like 16, like it could just end poorly. You're crazy though. If you People bridge that crazy. line too. It's healthy as fuck. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's worked out that's for the best. Crazy shit. That's that's not the beacon I know. Ah. Oh, Francis. I know was fast as lame. You guys really left beacon in the rear view. We're all virgin, yes. baby. Drugs, I'm money. Keeping this chastity belt on until I yeah. win a Grammy. Francis, I think you have a warped perspective of like being 22. I think if you were went back and was 20 and you were 22, I don't think you would be like fucking every yeah. single night nobody even talks to each other anymore speak for yourself <laughs> every time we go on the road t- with together he's like i can't believe you're not here just fucking pussy all day. <laughs> oh, when i was 22 i had to keep my i had to raise my elbows that's how up to my elbows it was i was like oh shit oh, the agt no. audition you're like you 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 yeah that's sad so also like i like i feel like everybody who have been like oh you're kind of cute has been like Yo, merrily we snore. And I, like, I, I can't, I can't look you dead in the eye and do that. Like we're, I can't do it. We had picked up our van. This was like four days ago, five days ago. Yeah. We were driving. We just picked up some new merch from like the guy that makes our t-shirts. We were just sitting at a red light, and a girl comes in, like slams on the window, and she goes, "You guys are so funny." <laughs> and she just runs away. And then Jude looks in the rearview mirror, and she had gotten out of her car. No oh, shit. That's and crazy. Then, and then later we got a DM from her being like, by the way, I was the girl that w- got out of my car to say hi to you. Love your music too. <laughs> yeah. We're just like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. When? I mean, you should just stay that, safe. Cool. I never had that happen. That was a layup. You guys. Yeah. You dropped the ball. Dropped there. The I should have popped the van over the road. Just park the car. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wench the your car. Oh, come on in. Let's fuck all of us. I would have started a relationship <laughs> with our, our boy. Our boy, Sky Vaughn, who's behind the camera, he was like, what is it like being a B-list celebrity? I was like, we are not. We're like we're like LMNOP list. LMNOP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But then we were we were having a debate about this. I wanted to bring this up because I he was like I was like who's B list or who's A list and he said Timothy Chalamet is A list and I thought I like, agree I think yeah, that's, yeah, that's spot on. See? Yeah, 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 definitely. Come on now. I feel like A list dating like, a Kardashian. Like you have to have like a tenure. Like, I, I judge A list based on if my parents know who they are or not. Okay, I like right, that. Okay. Yeah. A list to me is like the Brad Pitts of the world. I feel like Brad Pitt is the first name you say, but is he yeah. is he aging out of it though? Yeah. Legacy. Yeah, he's legacy. I think legacy A-list, A-list, A-list implies a legacy. He'll stay. Or is there a separate category? You have to make room for new people. Right, right. Because right. they're A-list when we were kids, you know what I mean? So this is the new A-list. Like Timmy is new A-list. Like Brad Pitt was A when you were born. You know Who else is A like Kanye. Is it only actors? Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. Yeah, yeah. Kim is up there. To me, it's like it's like Oprah. It's like Obama. No. Oh, you have you a very. Very... Oh. You got to keep it elite. Oprah? I don't even elevated. think I would say Oprah's level celebrity. Celebrity. celebrity ranking. <laughs> what about oh, but any president? Talking. Any president Steven? is definitely a list. Steven. I don't think I would say Oprah because I don't even know if my little sisters would know Oprah if they saw her. That's but true. Like, Taylor. Taylor's a. He yeah, was, definitely. Was sure. you know what else? I was, I was, I so on the side, uh, like of doing the music, I teach like music lessons to little kids, like uh, on AGT, exactly, like the little like sell your farm for the, for the little kids, <laughs> and and I was like, okay, we could You're sing farm hand, yeah, like they wanted, they want to bet it all. <laughs> um, but I was like, oh, we could sing like a Bruno Mars song, and they were like, who's that? And I was like, no, oh my god, no, I agree. Bruno, Bruno Mars is not A-list. aging out. For, what? Like, he's kind of Bruno Mars might be D list. So no. D, stop, yeah. bro. D? Don't put smut on his the name. The peak of Bruno Mars being A list is when he had that song where he talked about oh, Tone funk. No, the one where he talked about having really nice sex, and it would ruin uh, every single lazy song. car ride. Lazy home. song. Yeah. Floor. What is yeah. it? Like the no, no. on the floor. Yeah, lazy day or whatever. Lazy day. Oh, have a really yeah. nice girl. Oh, lazy day. Yeah, yeah, nice day. Yeah. I remember I would be in the car with my mom, and that song right. would come on. I, I went to I Chile around that time. Yeah. And everyone there was obsessed with that song. Yeah. Like they recreated the music video yeah, with yeah. their buddies. They were so <laughs> they had some really nice sex so with their buddies. Random, good song. Like, yeah. Bruno has Isn't that the music He's video in Japan for right now. He's like uh, doing like a Harajuku thing in Japan now. I saw that. Wow. Tokyo Dome show. Yeah. I saw that. He's playing at the Tokyo Dome. He's just Dome? like calmly he did four so shows famous. at the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking really that's A list. Yeah, I don't think he shows it off. He's not like He's not flashy. Yeah. Son of a boy dad. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Running. No. Doing hey, where was Rihanna Surprise. the other day? Did you guys see that? Like, it was at that wedding. Oh, in yeah, India or something? Yeah. Yeah. booked to play a wedding and it looked so awesome. Yeah, I paid like, like $7 million. Seven million. Yeah. To be there. Yeah. No. Who was this? Rihanna? Yeah. yeah for the most, the, the richest guy in India. Zuckerberg was there. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Zuck pulled up? Yes. Yep. Wow. Zuck was there just posted. I must, that's crazy that when you get that famous, you're still doing like corporate gigs. I mean, seven million is seven million million dollars. Yeah, out of question. How much money do you think Rihanna has, though? Do you think that even is like 
She's a billionaire, and right? She's probably making $7 million a show anyway. Oh, yeah. And the Fenty stuff, I bet, is just pulling in tons it's of tough. cash. Yeah. Is, that, is that your idea? Is that your... Uh, I think I think that's thought. what... I saw, did you see Lil TJ did a bat mitzvah the other day? No. A bar mitzvah. It's great. It's an awesome video. This kid, like, comes out with TJ. Like, it's like an NBA that's entrance. Cool. And they start like get, they get on stage. He's like his DJ. It's great. I wonder what that bag is like for TJ. What kind of what kind of bags does he get him? A good amount like, of money. Two fifty. Bar mitzvah bags are oh, sick. I think I think I he think. opened with FN and just came out with. It. <laughs> I have no idea what songs they ran. I don't know if it was a clean version or they did like sort of a Torah portion to kind of <laughs> make it fit with the theme. But I would be down to do a bar mitzvah, like a really solid bouncy cast. We want to be like the guys, like the word out the guys that like kind of get all the kids to dance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We would do both. We would kind of be the, the MC. Can you do, yeah, can you do your MC, dude? Like, can you? Come on, guys, get on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, do it. Give me, give me the one. Introduce, introduce Jonah. Introduce Jonah, dude. Give it to me. Everyone, give it up for Jonah's bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling. <laughs> that That's hilarious. Incredible. Where's Sid- Where's Sydney Sweeney rank on the A B list? A for sure. But no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I think she's like top of B. Disrespect. Sweeney is I think easily she's top of B. B. Yeah, top of B. Oh. I think she's like B. firmly entrenched in B. No, like, yes. Sweeney I'm is so definitely A. I'm being <laughs> way harsher about this. I yeah, just feel like she's maybe Swe- Sweeney. C-D. Dude, Sweeney's Sweeney and a like from Jack Harlow for sure, already. but. Sweeney Jack Harlow on that B tier. Jack is A. My dad knows Jack Harlow. Bro. No. Dad's a white man can't jump. Easy, bro. Jack Dad's Harlow, Harlow is not A list. Yes, I'm trying to, and Sweeney is. Will not yeah, shut up about Sweeney Jack. Oh, SNL. No. Jack is A. All, a. Jack, all these people are no. <laughs> the New Balance commercials. My dad saw that and he was like, "Oh, the basketball player guy." Rude, like, dad, rude. I forgot rapper. about. I forgot about the yeah, commercials. That play. proves that he's B because your dad knows. Hey, if if he's in a movie, he's A. He can't name a Jack Harlow song. Like we can. What's popping? He so can give you. He can give poppin'. you the first four bars. Of what's popping? Like oh, nobody. Yeah, right. <laughs> sounds like you just have a cool ass dad. I don't it's think on that. the paddle court. Like you guys heard this new Harlow kid. Yeah, that's man, not it. Dude, dude, Jack man, he just went into his lyrical bag. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know like he could spit like this. Like, Illegal like, shit. Nail tech on the last album. <laughs> I knew he had bars, but it's just like. This and he's is- friends with Tyler Hero. I mean, yeah, it's man. great. <laughs> I don't know if my dad would know who Jack Harlow or Tyler Hero are. He's heroes, a, heroes, he heroes, he heroes, not there. Jack Harlow, he hit us up recently too. Really? Say what you said to your dad when you were going to tell him that Jack Harlow hit us. Oh, okay. So yeah, we got a DM from Jack Harlow just being like, "I love, I think you guys are funny." We were freaking out. We love Jack, and I, I was, I like, my parents live in Connecticut, so I took the train. I hopped in the car. My dad picked me up from the train station. I was like, "Dad, guess who hit us up?" And he was like, "Drake." And I was like, "No, that already happened." And he was like, "Man, you got to take advantage of that Drake thing, man." No, <laughs> it's not like we're moving on. We're working to on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> and then I was like, "No, keep going." And he was like, "I forget who else he said." And then I was like, "No, your favorite white basketball player." And he was like, Brian Scalabrini? And I was like, oh. <laughs> really? Hair? He was like, no, like oh. fake. And he was like, oh, Jack Harlow. And I was like, and I was like, yeah, it was him. And he's like, man, man you guys got to like open for him or something. Like you got to take advantage of this opportunity. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Dude, that's really my enough. parents used to do that exact same thing. It's like every like any big person would reach out and they'd be like, so are you guys going to work? And I'm like, they don't even, they said hello. They're not, we're not going to work <laughs> together. I was like 19 or 18, like Cody Co and Noel Miller. Yeah. I met them and they were like, so what, are you working for them now? And I was like, no, <laughs> in no scenario am I working with them. It was a five minute debrief. <laughs> Sonny's just looking out. He's like our business manager, pseudo. He's great. He can't not. Yeah, my dad has been sort of like our interim because we we were in high school like very. We had a major label. We had a business manager. We had all this stuff, and then the label game is basically just like they make their money from the Drakes and the Dua Lipas of the world. So if you don't like hit a certain level, they kind of are like we're gonna move on. So when that happened, we like got dropped from our label. Our business management team dropped us, and my dad is like an accountant. He's been like his whole life. And he sort of, at first, I was like, can you help? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll do it. And now he's like so into it. So locked in. Like he was pretending like he was like maybe thinking like it might not be the best idea. But now he's like, man, we could get like some sort of like crowdfunding, like sort of crypto. Like you guys don't need a label. Like we could fund this whole thing ourselves. He's great. Listen, I, I'm sure your dad's great. I would caution you about getting in bed uh, with a father I have many times. band as <laughs> as management. There is a long history in the music industry. True. Jackson Five, 
<laughs> I was thinking. Yeah. Jam- I was going right away. I was going. Same right. problem. Yeah. Your yeah. dad said talked about crypto and <laughs> yeah, was, uh, yeah, yeah early at all. Mr. Jackson was early on the crypto wave. Yeah, he had Bitcoin. I'm telling you, Bitcoin's going to take off. are about to sign 64. some paperwork with your dad. <laughs> Make sure you let me take a blinking look. Blinking twice, it. everyone. I'm blinking twice. <laughs> because I Please went to four us. days of law school. <laughs> true, true story. Did you, did you do uh, musical theater? Yeah, I was. Uh, that's how I actually... So I'm from New Orleans originally. And I moved here like because I was obsessed with doing like Broadway or like thinking about being on Broadway I came to vacation to New York like every summer to see a play I saw Shrek the musical like four times in a row <laughs> like made my parents get me the little ears and everything and the shirt and then one time I came up to see Newsies I was obsessed with and I auditioned for like an open call of Matilda the musical mm. in 2012 and like three months later after like a couple callbacks, they were like, you're you're in. You're going to be like an understudy slash alternate. You'll go on twice a week out of the eight shows, but you're in if you want to do it. And my parents were like super hype. I'm an only child. My dad had an office in New York. They like, I'm so grateful. They moved everything around so I could move up here. I was going to go back to New Orleans after doing the show for a year and a half. And then I kept booking little theater like either readings or like little shows and stuff and then finding neverland you were in i did i did finding neverland with the big bad harvey weinstein which i have oh oh i didn't yeah. know you were gonna go there oh well i mean i no, just we got like it. i gotta say it because i feel like if i don't mention it people will be like he's not why isn't he saying it yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. why didn't he say anything everyone about harvey was weinstein? thinking right? everyone was thinking yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly but no, I just so hadn't did, did said you say it. The we, big, we would have bad thought, Harvey Weinstein. Big, big, I mean, he's he's bad, and he's just a large. Wait, didn't Harvey I, Weinstein produce Finding Neverland in 2014? Why didn't he mention that? Didn't you not say anything? <laughs> shit happened. Didn't you stay silent on the issue Holy of you being fuck. a part Every of an abuser's show? Andre Day close associates with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, no. Call. who's that? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I I just kept doing shows, and then and then once I went to high school, it was kind of like I met Jude on the first day. We were wearing the Adidas NMDs, not the hype ones with like the red and blue little pockets, like just the general GR, release ones. The GRs. The GRs. And then I was sort of kind of like doing theater, and I got really anxious because like my voice was not like a little kid's voice anymore, and I was trying to sing like all this crazy stuff, like Dear Evan Hand, all these shows that are just like <laughs> insane. Skyvon laughs because we 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 joke about it. And then eventually, I was just kind of like to my parents, I had gotten rejected from a bunch of shows, did a bunch of auditions. I was kind of like, I really want to try this band thing and like write my own songs. And they were like, I don't know, you've done so much. And then as we kept going and they kept coming to shows, they were like, oh, okay. I see that you are passionate about it and want to do it. So like, go go with the wind. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Sick. And a you- cool story. Yeah, it's wild. From New That's Orleans crazy. to New York. Journey. It's all fate. Completely on and a whim. Like Henry and Henry have the same birthday. By yeah. complete coincidence. And our dads have the same name. What the that's fuck? A, that's all we can say about you guys? Yeah. Just saying, like, <laughs> no accolades. No accolades. Yeah. I'm just speaking on fate and just, yeah. like, no, no. The universe, the stars aligning for us to be here. We right? got Harvey Weinstein's Strictly favorite nature. boy over here. <laughs> you two's right-hand man. be born on the same day. They're both the Scorpios. Birthday. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> a little deeper. <laughs> we're both Pisces. We're very, very emotional, very creative. Um, I love it. And how? And you, you do, you do some of your own music? Yeah. I know you do some of your own music too. That's how, that's how we did his research. Yeah, wrong. I'm locked, bro. Locked what the in. fuck? Very locked. Play with me. I was like, I was like 14, and I got Garage Band, and I was doing the theater, and I would like do acapella songs. Where like I'd sing the top line, and then I'd sing the bass, and I'd sing the drums, and like play a little guitar. I would have gone hard on TikTok. Would have. Oh, like sure. acapella, yeah. sort of. Yeah, 14 yeah. year old me. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it would have gone. Would have been like this kid's the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Them on America's Got Talent ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been on Ellen. <laughs> Ellen really quick, I, I I saw Matilda with the original cast. Oh, hey. There's a like a thirty percent chance you saw me then. Yeah, I was on it every once in a while. I saw it with the 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 proper trunch bowl. He was crazy. He, he was, was a, awesome. He was so good. He kind of stole the show. No, he, he used to be. His name's Birdie. He's amazing. He just won like a Olivier or some award or a, I don't know. But he used to be like a method actor where like he'd be backstage like in that thing. So if you were like screaming or like being a, like an annoying like 12 year old, like he would like snap at you. Yeah. Just start yelling. Also all the creative team, they were all British. So they were like, and the show had done really well in London. So when we came over, like I moved to New York, we started rehearsal the next week. There were kids in it who were playing the younger kids and there were adults who were supposed to be like the older school kids, if you remember. And like w- the little kids were called in two weeks ahead of everyone else to do stamina training. Which is basically just like all the kids running in circles, singing all the songs. 
grooming. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I got screamed at so many times. Oh. Wait, it's a dude that plays. Night, with, is, I thought it was like Miss Trunchbull. It's yes, a, yes. Right, it's a uh, dude. It's dude a dude plays dude, it. Like oh, yeah. plays uh, the the woman. He's in like this crazy kind of like fat suit with like these huge tits and like this ass and like like swings oh. this girl around it's insane and like the bun and like the why is a woman not playing that they just couldn't like put out a casting call for like a it's miss doubtfire type shit yeah it is very miss doubtfire sort of in that realm also like there's a lot of like there's a part where he has to like pick this girl up by her pigtails like her by her hair and like swing her around so like they had to have someone who could like literally like fling this girl around so it was real like not they, that a woman couldn't do that but it was actually they actually it was like a harness attached to her wig i'm giving away all the secrets yes hey boys yes good to see you guys hey what's up family those the upper ups walking by. <laughs> I have no idea, who those dudes no idea. <laughs> exacts <laughs> never seen those dudes before wasn't cat williams getting all pissed about dudes wearing dresses yeah he, was. Uh, he should start a beef with a huge cat williams fan are you really Get on the mic that's in bro so stand up. Are you really about to rep Cat Williams? <laughs> Pull your pants off. Pull <laughs> your pants down. <laughs> All right, so I've been waiting for this moment. I actually had a joke. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 just kidding. Um, but the industry is full of liars. Facts. Yeah. Facts. Cat Williams. Is it, I, I'm going to pretend to be Cat Williams. The industry is full of liars. Josh Peck is gay. Oh, um, no. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I like this aired all out. No, no. no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, I think you should use this this opportunity to just tell Josh Peck what you want to tell him. Okay, which camera should I look at? It doesn't matter. They're dead, all dead in the middle, right, with the Josh red light Josh Peck, on. I'm calling you out. I need you to <laughs> say what's up to me or something. Yeah. After calling him gay? Yeah, a call that's out sounds a nasty call out. Wow. <laughs> Skyvon is a massive Josh Peck fan. Yeah, Drake and Josh. Where did that come from? Oppenheimer. You're gay. Say what's up to me. <laughs> yeah, you can Josh get Peck, it. I'm Josh calling Peck's you the well. fuck out. Explain your Josh Peck. Say hey, hello, please. Um, it started um with the Amanda show. I was like five or something, and I was I just Josh was the best character on it. You're in love. <laughs> You're in love. Yeah, he, uh, he and, is the man. And then Drake and Josh came out. I was like, oh, this is fire. And then <laughs> were you always Josh a Josh guy? Hollywood? Yeah, I was. I was more of a Josh. Everybody's guy. Everybody's a Josh guy. Yeah, Hold on Drake and Josh. Who's a Drake guy? You're a Drake guy. Drake was like the cool guy who was getting all the pussy. Josh was the show. Josh was the show. Was the show. Was the you know what the best episode That's of Drake crazy. and Josh was? You know the one where they lock, they accidentally lock themselves in the treehouse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they the they draw the door. Yeah, they draw the door. Right. So good. No, the the one of the best sidebar. displays of acting. <laughs> legendary, legendary. One of the best displays of acting, um, was that episode where like. Drake and Josh like start having beef with each other, right? And, and they like, switch their like, diets at the stuff. end when like when Drake when Drake Bell is like all wet and stuff and like and Josh is like yo like no no Drake is like yo like dude I need you man like I I just I need you and Josh like has that moment where he's just like <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt like I was there. <laughs> That, that was crazy. Was that that was, that one? It was like the rekindling of brothers. Was the re yeah. yeah, then they, they started playing ping pong. It, it was great. <laughs> Yo. That was, and then Oppenheimer. You know, that's how he booked Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's how he booked Oppenheimer? Yeah, it was off that clip. On that scene. Sick. Sick. Christopher Nolan saw him in Drake and Josh and said, this guy's going to be magical one day. He's yeah. going to be the best so, button actually a ever. huge David Dobrik fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in David Dobrik's vlog. Right. I forgot about that era. I know, um, me too. Wait, can I change the subject kind of quickly? How did you get into battle rap? I, I need to know this. Oh, that's a good question. Um, getting back to the music real quick because we are musicians at heart. I I, I just, uh, when I first went to college, I enrolled in college and I, I'd never liked to even rap really when I was in high school. Like I didn't really listen to a lot of rap. I was like listening to John Mayer and shit like that. That yes. was kind of my bag. Yep. Uh, I know that you guys are locked on uh, John Mayer as well. Love some John. The GOAT. Incredible. Love Continuum Correct. was the one. That was the album. Continuum is be the perfect album. Have you seen album. the In Repair live video? Oh, where they record him it. and Steve Jordan and Pino. It's, it's amazing. All the pedals. Yes, it's really, really good. Of him, I forget. I think it's in New York, but it's Pete? no, it's not Pino. It's um, forgetting that guy's name. Um, but it's that guy who plays the bass like guitar with six strings. The Fender Six. Yeah, exactly. He's a, he's a legend. Okay, John sorry. Legend. Can, continue. Legend. He's but just that that was kind of what I enjoyed in high school. And then we went to high school, or then went to college. Started like kind of freestyling, uh, like around the keg kind of vibe. And then this famous rapper at the time, this guy named Charles Hamilton, a guy from Brooklyn, came to Penn State, 
And I had I was in a play actually where I like freestyle rapped and like went out into the crowd. People would hold stuff up, and it was <laughs> a precursor to hell with him. Yeah. Loki, the same kind of thing. And uh, the DJ from that play was like, "This guy Charles Hamilton's coming to our campus. Like he likes to have people up on stage and freestyle." So he didn't have people up on stage to freestyle, but I was like kind of waiting all night. And then afterwards, like I ran into him backstage, and like we got into like a rap battle. And it went on like a uh, world star hip hop the next day. And I was like, holy fuck. Wow. Uh, like it was, uh, and that's all I was trying to do with it. But then Battle Rap League started calling me up and uh, I started like kind of traveling in my early 20s, like traveling the world, doing like battle rap and shit like that. Um, so you realized you were good at it like when you started rehearsing for that play? Uh, it was like, I, I could just kind of freestyle. And that was like, it was like this kind of free form, like hip hop play. Um and I was that that was my audition. Like they didn't like ask me to do anything, but I was like, I can do this. I can freestyle. And so they kind of implemented it into the play and that they had me kind of doing it in front of the uh, the audience uh, every night at the play. Damn. So cool. But did question, you, would you rap battle with Charlie Clips? I uh, I definitely would. I don't know if I, I was I was booked to battle him like once or twice. It never materialized. And then I was going to book him. I was doing like compliment rap battles and he was dying to do one of those. Compliment battles. That's genius. You're yeah, nice to each other. Yeah, the nicest. That's what it was called. The, the, that's the cool. nicest of dudes just complimenting the shit out of each other. But you know Charlie Clips? Um, yeah, I'm familiar with him. With his work. Yeah, he's incredible. He's, he's great. He's like a genius freestyler. I TikTok for you all the time. Really? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's sick. He's uh, he's very talented. You guys do a little rapping? I feel like... Uh, this guy does. Not on this. You know you need, you you need guys New York. That's kind of like rapping. That's like a little like Beastie yeah, Boys, Beastie like Boys vibe, vibe. vibe. Yeah, yeah. We tap into that a little bit. There was a funny moment. Do you remember when we... So we... um, There's this kid band called Imagination Movers. I shouldn't call them a kid band. They're a band, but they mostly do like Disney Channel stuff. And there was a track. They did like a cover album of one of the songs was called My Favorite Snack. And we did like a Beastie's rendition and Jude does the first like verse. And then I was in the booth trying to do the Beastie Boys impression. And I just couldn't get as clean as Jude. Jude just has it so clean. I was trying to be like, well, my favorite yeah. snack is grapes. <laughs> you like, you, you had to put also just being in the booth and like seeing you in the control room with the talk back button being like, that was great. Can we, like, you can give me more sort of energy with it. I feel like you're kind of in the top. And I was like, I don't have this, bro. I don't I have this. It, I think it goes, um, it's one of my favorite verses. Um, my really? favorite snack is a peanut butter cracker, jelly on top. It's really lip smacker, something like that. Couldn't get that line. Crazy. That line. Jude had to come in and just yeah. just blew it up. Lip smacker. Yeah. It is hilarious yeah. if people used to listen to that and be like, "Oh my fucking god." <laughs> oh my god, that's exactly incredible. what I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't the imagination movers. I eat those too. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, BC Boys. Yeah, we that song, you know, you need unique New York um was definitely a BC Boys homage and we did this whole video where we like ran around the city and just got people to say that phrase. Like we would just cold go up to people and be like, hey, we're shooting a video. Can you just say, you know, you need New York. I just watched this video. Yeah, And then the whole video is like chopped up where it's all these different New Yorkers. Like every word is a different person. And that was really fun. It was really cool. You taught it to two kids that I think they were standing near a, a hot dog cart or something it's like, like that. Union the Union Square. Yeah, shop. Yeah, the Union yeah. Square. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And this is really weird, but yesterday, for the first time, I've lived, I've lived in New York for 12 years, and for the first time in my life, I got off the subway at my in, in Brooklyn, and as the subway was pulling away, there were two kids standing on the end, on the back, on the yeah. outside of the train, surfing, oh, wow. surfing. Yep. Yeah, and like God. waving at the people on the platform, being like, yo, what's up? And I'm pretty sure those two kids were the two kids in your music Very video. Very well, it, it might have been. I'm yeah. telling you, I saw them in the music video, and I was like, those kids were surfing the subway train yesterday. That's so funny. It yeah, that, it was so fun. We did that last summer, and we filmed it, like, for a while. Like, we didn't want to stop filming it. It was just so fun to just run around. We would just take, like, four hours a day to just go into mm -hmm. different neighborhoods, and we went into, like, every borough and did it. Um, you guys have like a broad enough uh, sound where you guys can like take so many influences. Like it's yeah. not like that much of a departure to do some like Beastie Boys yeah. shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it felt natural. And like honestly, the way we think about it is like we listen to everything. So why wouldn't our music kind of turn into that? Like we're just not interested in being kind of pigeonholed into one sound. If we wanted to, I don't think we even could. Um, mm -hmm. And it's honestly something we want to like continue to hone in on. But for now, it's like. If you listen to our last album, like every song is kind of a different like genre. 
Um, and I know I'm sure like a lot of people say that, but honestly for us, it's like, not just genres, like different, like, uh, time periods and <laughs> shit like that. Like the, and if I fuck myself to love you, yeah. what's that one called? Crazy, Crazy stupid, stupid love. Crazy that's stupid love. Oh, that's the Drizzy one. Yeah. yeah. That's like, that sounds like some fucking, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like some, like, uh, it's like, uh, like nineties, like in yeah. sync, but like, it's like, sounds like the Batman soundtrack, like, so like seal, well, like, like uh, it's, yeah. it's like, uh, just the one said recently that's that I liked, it was like we make pop music with R&B melodies, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but honestly, yeah, it's just, it's just everything. I mean, like when we first met, we always talk about 2016 music. Like that's what we kind of turned into. And that was, I mean, that was a lot of rap, like Life of Pablo, Kanye West, Birds in the Trap, Travis Scott, like, which doesn't really necessarily translate, but like that just was what got us excited. And then what? It was like, damn, Kendrick Lamar. Coloring book. Coloring book. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, For your eyes only. yeah, I mean, I guess that's all rap, but like just that, that music was like our era. And then we kind of turned it into a more pop thing over mm -hmm. time. Like, yeah. even like we were huge, like Brockhampton fans at that time. And even like, yeah, that whole Frank. World. Yeah, exactly. Love I mean, Frank. I was trying to think of any, anybody in that category. And then I remember when that 1975 album came out, what's brief in inquiry. I remember like, you were listening to it when I got to school and I was like, oh, what's that? And then we all started listening to mm -hmm. that and loved that band. And they were cool at like, he does some like spoken word, sort of like auto tune -y. Mm -hmm. It's all becoming one sort of thing. So then we were just trying to, especially in the early stages, like trying to mimic and replicate all those other groups. And what was great about like Brockhampton, for example, was that there were so many people and they'd have like a super rappy song and then they'd have like Bareface doing like whatever, like a ballad. So then we were like, oh, we got to do a guitar kind of ballad yeah. thing. And then like, yeah, back to like how we met, like I was doing the acapella tracks. Jude, we met on the first day because we were wearing the same shoes. And he was like, I wrote this song for my girlfriend at the time. And I was like putting out my own music on like whatever, like CD Baby, just uploading it myself. And he pulled out this project of exactly what I would do, which was like all the acapella tracks. And I was like, oh, this kid is very similar to me in the way that he thinks about it. So then once we figured out we could make music together and produce it, then it was like, what can't we produce together? So we were doing like pop songs, like super whatever, like kind of 80s inspired pop stuff or like rap stuff. It was just fun to like get up, like get together and like cook up was what we used to call it, you know? And like, it was like hanging out. At the time we were in sophomore year, we would record every single day of the week. Yeah. That's okay. so fucking sick. Like a new song every day? I mean, it de it depends. Shit. Like, we, so the song that Francis said that he liked was on our first album called Trumpet Boy, and that we worked really hard on. Like, it's like 15 songs. I could tell, yeah. yeah. That was my favorite. Yeah. Thank you. And I go deep. Bro knows the one that Drake knows. I, I remember. Right, that. Hey, you go deep. <laughs> oh, really a surface level <laughs> kind of. album right. that was really work right. to, right. yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For Drake. Exactly. Before it all. Before, before it all. Drake. 2018. Yeah. Free Drizzy. But it was so much fun. Like, we would all come over to my apartment in my tiny little bedroom, and I had, like, the the iMac and the little interface and the MIDI keyboard and the electric drum set, and we just, like, go to town. And it was fun to, like, treat it like we were locking into the stew till, like, four in the morning. Like, we'd go to the deli twice, at, like, get our little food, like, do a little walk, and then come back. And, like, there are posts, if you scroll all the way down, of us, like, there was one I remember after school on Friday. We like worked from like two to two or whatever, and like like the before and after. Like we were obsessed. We joked too that like we had our website and like our first T shirt all like designed before we ever like actually played together as a band. Like we were just so into like the brand and how are we going to make our shows cool and like how are people going to interact with the website and all that shit. So we were like super inspired by all the guys doing it themselves. That we were like, we can do this ourselves too. Like, we can make a Squarespace account and like make a YouTube and like make a custom ink account and just. <laughs> it's crazy that that you uh, like had that much vision about like the brand and everything. But like one of the things that's making it take off the most is just you guys being like stupid as fuck singing in your like apartment like under a blanket and stuff like, like that. Andy Samberg. Yeah, all it takes. <laughs> you I do want to look shockingly like Andy Samberg. You got to be tired of it by now, though. I, no, well. I think it's fucking awesome. It's we need great. to get to him. It's we so need to Andy Samberg's the man. He's he's the best. I, I think it's funny just because I don't see it, but I do understand. That's it. crazy <laughs> to not see it. I see it, but it's not like literally people I act see it less and time, less. Like they're like Socrates, like yeah. Speaking of you must it, get. Like, have you ever gotten <laughs> stopped in the street being like, "Are you Andy Samberg?" No. No, really. That's crazy. Nobody I've... like mistakes me for. It. <laughs> That's crazy. That's funny, I though. could see that. I could see that I, happening. That, yeah, it, it's it's that. It's 
Robbie Shapiro is big. Like we call these the Shapiros. These glasses. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, "Yo, you're gonna wear the Shapiros today?" Um, yeah, has Andy Samberg reached out to you guys? No, oh, I don't even think he's on Graham. I don't, I don't think he is either. Scrolling reels like that. you guys should do a song with them. That'd be sick. Oh, yeah. oh, that oh my god, we gotta tread that line though. We don't want to get. Yeah, you don't want to get into like. No, but it's fun. And and like, like we're like <laughs> when you were saying earlier. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 we're just saying we would love to do it. <laughs> like, I'll totally do a little. That would be so else. sick. I, I, I just think. The like Lonely Island came Andy back. Right now, it's very I funny, but <laughs> I also like we're so stupid on the videos that sometimes it's funny that like that's what people think of us as right now. Right, it's, it's like almost a time. revelation coming to your music and being yeah. like, oh, they're we're, not playing at that's, all. That's what's great about it. Like we, I mean, I guess throughout this whole talk, like we've kind of established, like we've done this, we've been doing this. There's music to discover, and like now that we're bringing people in in this different way, and then they can find it on their own. And yeah, number boy. It also yeah, just like, puts more emphasis on, I feel like when people complain about whatever artists having to make TikToks or having to be on social, like it's sort of just an excuse that like they can't find their own way to do it. And I think it's been fun to figure out how we can be funny, but then also like it doesn't, it's definitely pressure, but it's like, it just means that the music has to be that much, that much better. And we just have to keep making good stuff. And when people are like, I have the best song, but like because of the algorithm, it doesn't get discovered. It's just like, there are so many amazing artists who I've, I've found on TikTok who you would have never, you know what I mean? Like random people singing or random artists or whatever. So it's like- Bro, shout them out, bro. I mean, I'm trying to think of like who I'm thinking of even. Like, for example, there's this dude named Elijah Solo. Have you ever seen this guy? He's a guitar player and he plays with his band somewhere literally in Africa. And it's this dude with a TikTok account and he like films them making a song together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like this guy now, this guy Elijah has gotten his guitar loop from this TikTok like sampled like whatever, like a hundred thousand times. That guy RJ Paskin who does like yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that where it's like, oh, there are people who are genuinely really talented who are coming up through social media. And like when people discredit it by being like, it's so dumb or like, how's it going to translate? I just think it's not the right take. And for us, it's always just been like, okay, now that we have more eyes on us, like just means that the next song has got to be like that much better or like it's got to be that much more engaging. So, so. it's funny, like when Rowan was telling you guys and you're like, wait, they're, they're a band? Like, that's what we want. Like, that's great. Because <laughs> I think it's, it's like, one it's of like the, it's, it's like one of the joys of being in a band is like the camaraderie and like fucking around and everything. And it's like, sometimes there's this feeling, it's like if only people could see like how we are, but now you guys really legitimately have that like in your pocket at all yeah. times. Just like, oh, this is just like how we hang out. And it's like your best marketing tool in some ways because people want to root for you because they're like, oh, they're the type of people that like, I feel like my friends and I are. It's like this is the kind of way that we hang out or fuck around. Yeah, people say that. Thanks. People are like, I. Some people are like, I wish I could be friends with these guys, or I wish I had a friends like this, which is like just so sweet. And then also people are like, this is exactly my humor. Like I didn't know other people thought this was funny, and that's kind of how we feel. Like the singing shit. Like we just do that every day. You've been doing that for do that how long? Like seven <laughs> years. Seven years. Usually, yeah. usually we do it with like our own songs where we like change the lyrics and just like make fun of them ourselves. And then it turned into doing it with real songs at any given time. And then we just started filming that. And it's just funny that people think it's great because it's just like what we do. What yeah. was the first goofy one to, to first pop? one that really went f stupid. <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> That's a great story. This is uh, a really good story. It's like, so oh, remember, we, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were at, we were at a major label at the time. Um, and like the guy that we were working with there put us in a meeting with like the social media managers and we like had a zoom call and they were like, yeah, man, like guys just <laughs> those like, guys are always dumb as hell. Yourself. <laughs> like, I don't know. I can't even better. Say. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> yeah, stupid. Yeah. so stupid. And we got off the call being like, okay, like all it really made us feel is like exactly what Sora said earlier. It's like, you just have to do it. Yeah. And so we were just walking around and like, we went to get like jerk chicken or something and Sora just filmed me singing, um, What's, uh, a king to a God? What's a king to a god? Like, which I can't say the name of the song now that I'm thinking. Uh, no church in the wild. Oh, it's no, oh yeah. Wait, I thought uh, it was. Yeah, it is no church yeah, in the wild. Yeah, no Sorry, I thought it was a different song. I thought it was a different song. Uh, but no, no, no church in the wild. Like, what's a king to a god? What's a... And it's just me on the street singing it, and we just let it be. We we ate our jerk chicken, and then we checked it, and it had like 27k. What? Yeah. That's so sick. Hey, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it just started going and like we had never had that happen. And then honestly, like we kind of just did that very periodically or sporadically, I should say. And then like only now in the past couple of months have we done it like and just kind of leaned into it. And yeah. Made it our thing. And now like people are like kind of doing it, trying to sound like us and like that's <laughs> cool. 
Um, you to get in there. We're the, we're, we're the king of it, I think. <laughs> like get your own, yeah. get your own fucking about, style. Yeah. It's just funny. No, there, there's some funny ones. Oh, but yeah. Other people. No, no. I say I can't hate them. You guys should just. You guys should make a total pivot and just start getting real nasty in the comments. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna get. We're gonna start in beef. people's DMs being like, "Fuck you, no, posers." It's, great. <laughs> it's true, <but> really <laughs> funny. Like, people like associate <laughs> songs that aren't ours with us. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Songs like we yeah. stole Blueberry Fago from Lil Mosey. Yeah. Well, Mosey that was a banger way there. before. No, he did it. That was way before my time. That was a banger. I was bumping no, But I'm just saying, like, people day. now are singing that and they're thinking of you two fucking in the backyard singing. <laughs> it's so, so stupid. stupid. I think it's what's so been stupid. fun about it all, too, is, like, we have been so lucky to be able to tour at a young age and have the van and, like, have those opportunities that, like, you're right. Like, there's no reason we shouldn't use that as our biggest advantage of, like... One, people maybe have an idea of like, okay, I'm seeing my favorite artist. I don't know what their day is like. They're probably on like the PJ to the arena. You know what I mean? Obviously, we're playing at like 100 cap rooms on this last tour or like our last headline thing. So to show people like, no, like we literally watched them load all their shit into the van from the last show, drive, sing a dumb song. And that was three hours ago. And now they're here. Like it gives people a little bit more of like a sense of like what it's like to like actually hang out with us and give it like a little dose of perspective of like it's not super luxurious we're all in one hotel room like we're all farting and like wake up super late and like go to bed late and we're in a band together but that's <laughs> yeah. but that's that's what makes it super fun so it's like we owe it to everybody who follows along that like they deserve that content of us just fucking around um you guys might be in the good old days I it know. feels pretty it feels you pretty good in the middle of the good old days right feels, now feels pretty feels pretty good no that's how it feels it's like we we have to have fun like we have to enjoy it and we take it very seriously most of the time but ironically these moments where we're just being stupid and ourselves get us in a room like this and get people to you know get our heroes literally hitting us up like just in ways we never thought was possible yeah and i think we're lucky too that like we're from here we have so much support here from our friends and our fellow you know homies who collaborate on our songs or sing verses or whatever like it's been great. I mean, even Sky Vaughn, like we just met through my middle school friend. And since then, like, it's just nice to see how this sort of thing that we've created can extend to like all our close friends and like put everybody else on and eventually have like a little New York gang of artists and musicians who are like all under the same wing, which has been really cool. Who's uh, who's the musician that you guys would be most excited to feature on one of your songs? I mean probably drake yeah. i mean like the drake thing was so insane because that's our guy like we were like what else like wait did you go to drake in suits we did yes yeah. <laughs> like, that's just hilarious before henry and i for my birthday went and saw that it's all a blur tour and we wore suits and everyone was like why are you wearing suits <laughs> my line was it's a special occasion yeah, yeah. <laughs> i used to go to michael buble in suits <laughs> we would go that's dudes hard. in suits for michael buble i haven't met you yet Bro, it's so hard. It's hard. <laughs> Owen Banks. Yeah, no, but I mean, Drake. Honestly, the guy we're trying to get to notice us now is Justin Bieber. It's, ooh, Justin Bieber would be a cool a one. Oh, we got to sing. Like, you're kind of in the Bieber today, I was going to say. You're sort of baby era. And white. Yes. I didn't meet yeah. this. The shirt was Very given nice. to me in New Orleans. I was there this weekend. Nice. I, I know you're from there. Nice. I, I, miss, I wasn't there for Mardi Gras. I was performing. Um, it, didn't really, perform? it didn't really go that well. It didn't really go that well. It's a weird yeah. sort of like entertainment city. city. Did not glad, yeah, glad you guys didn't listen to yesterday's episode because we were telling some <laughs> nasty things about New well, Orleans. It's, it's a it's a weird it's a weird city because oh, I love New Orleans. Music city, which it is, but it's also like it's like free music. It's like oh, yeah. I can go and like watch the street performer yeah. Yeah. dance yeah. and like yeah. get a margarita. Who's the old lady? Like, like AGT as a city. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like people just like whoring themselves out on the street for all the yeah. tourists who are like that's cute like nice. this is great i could film you playing like trombone on my story and then like fuck off to the yeah, so you guys never had to do that that like nashville grind where you're the people that when you get off the no. plane you're in the airport playing a song no i love nashville that i love that airport is dark my mom's whole family's yeah. from nashville yeah. I, I i love it down there i think it's a really it's a crazy music industry city like all the labels not or like all the like publishing companies and stuff are all down there i remember touring belmont college or something yeah. which is a music college and um yeah, it's just wild. It's a whole different world. Yeah. Like you think there's a music scene in every kind of major city, and there is, but like down there, it's a whole different. Like wild. a lot of writers writing for other people. A lot of and artists pop off from there. It's like the last place that they are before they pop off. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Do you guys, with Beyonce making a country album, do you feel the pull to 
sort of throw a little country into the same yourself. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, def- I definitely love me some good. I love I love me some good country. I think there's already some stuff in the in in some of the in some of the songs. I feel like also whenever there's an acoustic guitar being picked, people are like, "That's a country song." Well, it's like we, the nine seventy five we brought up earlier. The lead singer has a line where he's like, "The best songs, even if they don't end up sounding like it, kind of have a country foundation." Yeah, like whether it's just like the chord progression or just like great like those great country melodies so honestly all jokes aside like we do think about that sometimes because those those songs are so like foundational great songwriting songs what's the saying it's like country it's like like three chords and the truth (laughs) (laughs) three chords and a a moonshine but i love it like chris stapleton i was obsessed with johnny cash i loved back in the day tyler childers is fucking sweet i know tyler Tyler childers Childers. i mean morgan wallen you can't you can't disrespect the man zach was that brian zach brian i love too blake shelton was huge for me when i was like 10 shelton from the voice country will always be there though you got you can you can like turn like 40 and just be like i'm an i'm a country artist now yeah Yeah, my dad's dream for us it's more so we're not like okay this is going to be a dance album it's gonna be a country album it's sort of like a melange of things we we pull and then we sort of like assess we're trying to get better at it too because it's hard to like i think the biggest blessing and sort of curse about being in a band is like everyone here has had their own things that they grew up with that they love you know what i mean which we all sometimes we've realized that when you try to put it all into one song or like one thing it can be difficult to like like we always joke that like we can all play multiple instruments so there'll be like five bass lines on one song it's like there only needs to be (laughs) one bass going on here so it's like the work is actually like i feel like we could sit and think of ideas all day the work is like editing it to make it like it is a mix of influences but like it's clear what it is yeah. or like you can get a vibe and it's like oxable and all that stuff yeah. it's not that's the least like, sexy part though for sure oh yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Editing editing like, down absolutely by the end of writing and making stuff like it's really nitty-gritty for us and like you're just like do we need this layer do we need this and like sometimes that's also the curse of like doing it all on the computer it's like you can't make all those decisions sometimes i wish like Talking about the good old days, like where you're just recording just live and it's just, that's the song. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many tracks do you guys put? Like, uh, say you have like uh 12 or, or 15 tracks on a, on like a project that you put out. How many tracks do you cut and then whittle it down to 15? It depends. Honestly though, it, it gets cut down early. Like we don't, we're not like sitting with 20 complete songs and cutting it down. Like we start right. with a bunch, but then like very quickly we learn. Let's finish these ones. The, these are the songs. And a lot of times you'll start, especially because we're producing on a computer, like it'll be like, we'll do the instrumental or there'll be a lyric that'll start it. We'll do like the first chorus, the first verse, maybe another little section. And there are like a hundred of those, like half songs. And then we kind of have to be like, that's cool. And then what's fun about also like kind of having everybody sing or everybody being able to sing is like, if you throw something down, at least vocally, then it's cool to like wait to see what everybody thinks. And maybe someone on their own time is like, I think that's cool. I'm going to lay a verse on that or I'm going to do that. And then the, it's like the energy sort of picks up. So sort of the, it, it naturally widows down to like the ones that we're all hype on and want to add stuff to. And there are songs that are good, but also sometimes we'll be like, this is, feels done or I don't know how to add to this or like, this is good, but I don't get the vision kind of thing. So naturally a bunch of them sort of just come out of the woodwork and we're like, this, this should be it. I mean, we used to like just write how many tracks we wanted and like fill it in one by one. Be like the first song has got to be like us in our spaceship blasting off. And then the third song is like us on Mars or whatever, like a full concept. But as we've kept going, like we just keep writing all the time where it's hard to whittle, like narrow it down. Whittle it down. <laughs> whittle, whittle it down. <laughs> Oh, yeah. little, you guys little, ever considered the deluxe album? Like LeBron? Like LeBron? LeBron? <laughs> oh, I, I love that. I knew that that's what they were going. What we're going to do. Yeah, LeBron's actually a our next yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're here to say. I was waiting for just an excuse to bring that up. Yeah, that video is classic. so fucking funny. We brought that funny. up recently. Too. We did. What, I forget when. What is it? I don't know if I saw LeBron it. claims that he like created the deluxe album. Who was it for that he two did? Chains. Basically, like, as a publicity thing, he a and 2 Chains album. Which yeah. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. And so there was like all this press where it was just videos of them in the studio. And then it's like a funny clip where he's just sitting with two chains. Like, what if we cut off the last two tracks and give that to them like next week? Yeah. And do like a second thing. It's crazy. It's like classic LeBron, like lot, like just blatantly lying. Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm saying like, all right, but picture this, like deluxe album. And everyone's like, no way. That's hard. (laughs) And it had already been done for like decades. Yeah. <laughs> no hate to the king though. We love we love the love king. 40k, 40k. It is hilarious that uh, A and R does not mean anything. Like yeah. you just have well, a job as in the way LeBron thought it did. A and R is like 
artist in relations and repertoire. repertoire. Totally. But like, what, is, what does that mean? I mean repertoire. I, ideally, it's someone who like listens to your music and is like, this That's, stuff is really good. This is who you are. Yeah, what? This sets out. you up with producers, right, no, sets you up with songwriters. Like kind of like, it's like- Such a vague title though that anyone can like claim. The whole record industry of. is vague. It's like- I'm an A&R. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be an A&R. It's, 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 it's weird, but yeah, LeBron is probably the greatest A&R of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Created the deluxe. The He's deluxe also the greatest album. father of all time, and uh, Uber. probably the greatest cook of all time. I'm sure he's a great chef. Incredible, oh, incredible but, chef. Videos of him. Have you ever seen the videos of him he's, reading? Yeah, yeah, of course. See, the it's just he's best? one yeah. page into the book. It's one page into the book. <laughs> it's also all young adult novels. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he said he read The Godfather like seven times during one playoffs. Oh, really? <laughs> I keep on reading so The Godfather. It was so dialed. Highlighter, <laughs> like, highlighting <laughs> sections. <laughs> no he, wants, he went zero dark 30 mode and just needed a fucking good book. The Kobe one where he's like, I remember I saw him that and I said, he's going to drop 70 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I told my boys. Yeah, he's so dropping good. 70 tonight. I told my boys. so many good clips. The clip of him and Marcus Rashford where they're on the shop together and he's like, my coach used to always say like, <laughs> whatever, like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And he's like, oh yeah, that's my favorite timing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I said that. Ask my boys. That's my boy. <laughs> I would always say that. Favorite saying ever. What was the one? Uh, he's got, fuck, I'm trying, there's one that I'm trying to think of. He's got all the the music ones. Oh, the ones of him rapping, where he's just he's not he's yeah. There's another yes. word. That's another word. Yes, it's a great. Yeah. I respect that. First though. day out one where he's in the gym. Yeah. Oh, with T Grizzly. T -Grizzly. Is, like the yeah. shave head. That's a great yeah. one of him talking about his favorite tight ends in the NFL, like his favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then like the it's list. him, and like he's clearly looking off camera, and someone found the website with all the people he said in order. <laughs> he's listing them. <laughs> like it's yeah. like scrolling. Uh, it's like uh, George Kittle. I love Kittle. Like it's just blatantly that. word for word i love i love it i think for how much media coverage he gets he has done it spectacularly like for how much he gets covered it's amazing he as kind amazing of squeaky human. clean as he is one of the funniest lebron videos is the one where he's he's at like a club or something and there's two girls chasing him and it's have you seen it it's him and he goes the other way yeah. down the yeah. escalator yeah. 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 he's flying down Manna, the he's loyal. yeah he's, loyal, bro. he's a yeah. great example he's never cheated i heard no there's a life. I remember I saw LeBron and I said he'd never cheat. Not a day in his life. <laughs> too loyal. That's what saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's my, actually my one problem with LeBron is he's too loyal. He's too loyal. <laughs> so too hard of a worker. To Cleveland. Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> so is your guys' documentary, can, can we watch, like, is that out anywhere? Or will we out. be able to watch that? And did you guys cut that yourselves? Did you yeah. guys... You guys all edited it? Did a, we did it all ourselves. Like, it was just oh. us in our studio, like, which was just like a basement. That we had our stuff set up and we just had like sometimes we were handheld like Skyvon is right now on that camera or sometimes just literally a tripod set up like and was it all that camera yeah yeah and it's just shitty like, ass camera yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trash ass camera. people motherfuckers but yeah we're see what kind of camera going to la you. tomorrow um and we're screening it there this weekend and then it's gonna come out which i nobody knows but i'll say it right now it's what are you guys uh what are you guys flying out to la like We're American? a big plane podcast, American? by the way. Yeah. American. American. Like a Boeing. Ooh. It, it, <laughs> We're not American. We're cheap. <laughs> now American. We're last row, too. Yeah, I, I put us in the back this pass. morning. I kind of clicked us all last last row. Look, there's actually nothing wrong with last row. Yeah, I'm with you. Last row is better than some of the other seats. Yeah, like I middle. A video that's like, that. is there a better way to exit planes? Yes. Mm. Yes. Going out the back. Exits? Yeah, or like, there's this whole thing of like, what if it was like, all aisle seats or all all window seats all middle seats all aisle seats go at the same time yeah to get on the plane or to get yeah. off the plane to get on sorry yeah but I, it's it's always tough well okay. some planes they have two doors which is nice that helps yes but that's only when you're flying like a like far actually la they might have that so what about like are you guys the kind of guys where like the plane lands and you get up like i, mm. I hate we, we don't get up but we clap we definitely yeah, clap. Yeah, I clap. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we're clappers. Yeah. We're clappers. Actually, go in the flag. cockpit and shake their hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. <laughs> you're such a stand-up guy. Oh, this is great. People Can who I talk to the captain really quickly? Yeah. Don't honor the pilots like that. I don't anti-American. I I fly and I and I I went through a big <laughs> uh, I went through a big like uh, phase where I was obsessed with planes. 
Okay. So now I'll judge the landing in my head. <laughs> I'll be like, God, oh, they're coming in way too hot. This is going to be hot. <laughs> cool. I, literally, I did every, that. took the wheels down Every a little time I land at LaGuardia yeah. and you're landing over the water, I'm like, like this, oh, is this is it? Yeah. 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 No, no, are this you guys it. like pre-checky or like clear? Or are you more? I'm like, clear, but clear is, I mean, all time scam. Clear? Biggest scam of all time. Wait, really? Oh, no, he's wrong. Because clear initially was like, <laughs> no one defender. really knew about it. It was yeah. pretty low key. You just need yeah. to keep updating. You need, now you need the ocular kind of. Yeah, see, why is it it the meta quest it used to be like so you pay like a hundred dollars a year for clear it's included you get there and you credit card and now you find out now you're like oh "Oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna go puff something and then you'll go puff and then no exactly he's right you go puff now and it'll be like oh you just earned three years of clear for free and then you get to the airport and you're like, wait, how does every single person here have clear? Uh, and then you realize that it's just, they're just handing they out clear out. left and right. right. Yeah. But now there's like an elevated clear. That's what I'm saying. You got to keep updating and getting the latest clear and latest. Plus. <laughs> you got to earn more stripes in your A list clear. Bad. It's bad. Clear the only good one is TSA pre check, which I don't have. Yes. Speaking of, I sometimes have. You got to like do, a, do thing. Like a little interview. And Speaking Speaking of of the the and yeah. Yeah. I just purchased the AMC movie pass, Ooh, which yeah. I have been telling everyone. It comes with clear, it. I think. Yeah. yeah. Clear, you get a free I, month. I guarantee it does. Get a free month. You don't have to take your shoes off when you buy your popcorn. <laughs> exactly. So what does that get you? Unlimited movies? Three free movies a week, which is more than I see. And if you basically, it's 25 bucks a month. So if I see two movies a month, I'm already making my money. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you get a small anything, they'll just upgrade it to a large for free. So they, they get you with the popcorn still. But it was great. I saw Bob Marley, the movie alone. That was great. How was that? One uh, it was good. It was sort of like a, uh, what I told them was like, have you guys seen like the Disney plus like Giannis Antetokounmpo story thing? I don't think I've heard seen of that. it. That's yeah. what it reminds me of. Like it was very Disney Channel. Like it was very like Bob has all the answers. Like, oh no, like there's war yeah, and like you got to do a charity show. He's like, I got this it was story. A story. Like, yeah, it, it wasn't very. I saw Ferrari with um, Adam Driver, which was pretty bad, but worth was really horrible. worth seeing it. By oh, myself. that was I thought that was supposed to be really good. Oh, no, I'm thinking of. um. One House of Gucci. Well, they saw. I think they saw House of Gucci. <laughs> where like Adam needs to do an Italian accent yeah, 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 one yeah, more yeah. time. House of Gucci. House of Gucci. We saw, saw it for that. your birthday, and it was really bad. That one's bad. Yeah, I, I liked it. You thought liked it? Was it? Buns? Lady Gaga. We were the only ones in the theater just shitting on it. <laughs> we were yelling at the screen the whole time. I love Lady Gaga though. I'll I think I cried. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I, watched the Lady I think Gaga I saw it on an airplane and cried. Well, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah, on elevation. Airplane. Yeah. Gotta bury that. If you about being up in the air on the airplane will make you cry no matter what. Like I remember flying with my mom one time, and she was watching The Martian, and I look over when he's getting like like beamed yes. up to the spaceship and she's just like balling. Yeah, it's, crazy. <laughs> it's a great scene. It's like, mom, he's like not on Mars. Like Matt Damon is fine. <laughs> yeah. Matt Damon. like, I know, but like they saved him. <laughs> I think I cried listening to friends on an airplane. Honestly, uh, I think oh, I cried listening to you your guys. so caught up. Show. You meant our song. No, your guys song. You got so it's caught up. Nice. the show on podcast. <laughs> I've never watched that in full. I've never seen that. I have a question. Just like side note. Um, so like with these kind of podcasts and stuff, right? Like, yeah. When do you throw the ads in? Like when you like, all right, this episode is sponsored by. Oh, we'll do it after. Oh, so you just do so it after? Yeah, we splice it in. Yeah, we just splice it in. No. We'll probably pour it in right here, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do one. <laughs> That's actually probably funny. where all of the ads. You put go. the ads in. This episode is sponsored by Better Help. <laughs> that will be a good transition. It's perfect. No, it's a good question. Yeah, we just do it at the end, and then we just throw them in. Super easy. You think Rogan memorizes his ads, or you think he's just going? Dude, the best part about Rogan read. being on Spotify is you just can skip them. Oh fuck yeah! Dude, you that's just, the oh, yeah. best. I through them. Armchair yeah, expert. Yeah. You, skip, just, skip, you skip. don't even have to like do like the fifteen seconds. No, you just go seconds, all the way to the end. Track. Yeah, I get all the way over. Drag it. It's great. It's fine. You, you guys, big Rogan heads. It's perfect. You guys should go on Rogan. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll go on Rogan. And then you'd be like, we were on some other bars, bar stool. I don't know, whatever the fuck it was called. Bullshit. That's what. That's when once you get to Rogan. Rogan would. What Rogan say? Rogan would start talking to us about something that we would have no fucking. But you guys would make a joke, and he'd be like, watching you. Like he'd be like, yeah, but like the pyramids, like I don't understand how they were built, and we would just sort of be like, we went to Beacon. We met when we were fourteen, and like. It was tough. He'd be like, but have you seen this video of this guy getting mauled by a bear? Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, pull Jamie. it up. Jamie. He would tell you to try DMT, and you'd be like, we went to Beacon. We tried that in sixth grade. Yeah. That was we chemistry lesson fast. number one. Very fast. fast crowd. Is that what they meant by fast? That it was the bad kids? Yeah, I still it don't know what mom. the fuck he meant this by fast. got into, you know, 
got into drugs and stuff. Good yeah. shit. When I started hanging out with my friends now, when I was in like going into high school, my mom would always say, "That's a f- you're running with a fast crowd." That's what that means. Yeah, right. live yeah. fast. The Saint Anne's kids were supposed to be the fastest kids. Those are the fastest. Are the but, even, fastest. but even the Saint Anne's parents would would worry when their kids no. are going to be in parties. No, 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 the Saint Anne's parties are. Oh, I know those I heard, kids. I are heard a story fast. about. I had a friend. Those who, are some fast kids. <laughs> I had a friend who went to Saint Anne's, and she told me that like they would do this thing every year where they would all get super fucked up in like freshman year and play like a like a tackle football game. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And they would just all get super wasted and then just like, here we go. Like 11 on 11. We're fucking charging. Actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah. It sounds like a blast. Yeah. Sounds like a good way to get severely injured. Let's do it for, can we do it for Barstool? Yeah. 100%. Those kids are, those kids are really fast though. I mean, they're they're really, (laughs) those kids get into like cutting at a very early, like, what are we talking about? What do you mean by fast? They're out of the womb. They're they're just, they're like, get me out of this womb right now. Oh my God. Love the idea of cutting being like a misbehaving thing that's a, that's like fast you're running with a fast crew yeah, they're all hurting crew. themselves <laughs> but it, but you know huffing <laughs> and hallucinogens <laughs> all that stuff you guys know those guys are trying to kill themselves way too early on <laughs> you know we got three years until that's not you guys acceptable. i'm saying at beacon yes yes but you don't know what it's like being high in gym class at beacon <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> We one time crazy. I told this right. One yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can yeah. cut we it if you don't want it. No, we this were, is perfect. This is great for. This is actually very sort of like push. So it'll be it'll be cute. Like we thought we had like a CBD joint. Like we thought we were just basically taking the edge off. How much yeah. more lame can you? Yeah, get? we, we couldn't have I been actually, more lame. I got a CBD story in high school too. Okay, good. You'll yeah. tell it right after. And why don't you just tell it right no, now? No, no, you know no, what? No, no, no. no. Uh, I want to hear theirs. <laughs> You know, go ahead. No, seriously. Long story short, we smoke it. It's not CBD. It is. As Henry likes to say, Delta Eight. Ooh. I don't know if it was actually Delta Eight, but that it was. Real. It was weed. Um, and <laughs> Itai and I, who's not here, we had class right after you had gym, and we had science class, and we were there like five minutes late, and I was wearing these leather pants. Uh, we walked in. <laughs> we walked into science class, and our science teacher says. You're, you're interrupting late. the lesson. Yeah, right? exactly. You're interrupting Make the a, lesson. You're loud in the hallway. Squeaking in. <laughs> yeah, like through the pants. door, they can hear like, yo, we're <laughs> fucking late as fuck. That's hilarious. And then he, we walk in. He's like, you're late. And then he looks at me right in the eyes. He says, I can't get mad at you when you're wearing red leather pants. <laughs> they were red yeah. too? Not a Mr. Mott. And Isai and I just started so dying laughing. <laughs> and we had to end up leaving the class a little bit early because we basically couldn't handle being as high as we were in a science class. Physics of sound, we were building a speaker. Man. <laughs> it's great. Mr. Mott used to let me use my phone as a calculator on the <laughs> test, which was like, rough. He knew you were high. Like flappy yeah, he, bird. He, 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 like, he was wearing a fedora. He knew what time it was. It's hilarious to be like high as shit walking down the hallway and being like, my pants are so loud. <laughs> <laughs> it had like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You were CBD'd up in high school? No, my story's not nearly as funny as yours. You already, I, 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 took, mean, I remember when I turned 18. <laughs> what did you say? You already kind of teased it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. right, right. Make something up. Then. Yeah. This is like the deluxe album of this segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll cut this one. We'll cut this story because it's not funny. But uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 t- I turned 18 and I want... And- at the time yeah, sick. Yeah. that's awesome but in massachusetts i think they turned the the tobacco laws so you had to be 21 oh. but i wanted to buy something right. now that i was 18 so i went to the gas station and i bought cbd gummies yeah. and i took like three of them before school and it turned out that they had like insane dosages of melatonin in them oh. <laughs> so that's i was funny. in school and i dude i've never been that tired and then i and then another time i did it again and I went to the gym. And I took pre workout with the gummies because I Joe Rogan said CBD That's how John is great Belushi for working died. out. Right, right. It right. relaxes your muscles, and it they offset each other. And I had like this most severe panic attack. Oh no! And I had to go home and I had to just I had to lay in the dark while my mom made me like a sandwich. It was, it was oh, I was like no. I was taking the CBD, being like, man, this is gonna be so relaxing. And then I was just having the most intense panic attack for like six hours straight. You think that you're about to have the best workout ever? It's gonna be like your new remedy. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be your new like routine. It was terrible, but yeah, It'd that's my. Amazing. Don't trust everything you hear on Rogan. That's great. No, no, you should. You should that's trust everything. Actually, you know what? Yeah, probably. yeah. Rogan is God. Uh, yeah. It's a fucking fact. <laughs> uh, the first time I did mushrooms, I did it with my friend Jasper. And we were in my apartment and we were trying to rent Secret Life of Pets. 
Oh. oh. And I remember, like, for some reason, like, I couldn't get the TV to work. And I, I thought my dad had, like, left the apartment for some reason. So I kept calling him, like, over and over again, over and over. And he walks in from the next room, like, from his bedroom. He's like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, we're just trying to rent um Secret Life of Pets. <laughs> and he's like, I think it's on a streaming. Like, I don't even think you have to rent it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he just walked out. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You think he knew? Oh, uh, pro- yeah, for sure. So, Definitely. Really? I feel like that would be pretty tough for a parent to be like, he's high on mushrooms right Well, now, the story it? actually <laughs> continues on. We watched Secret Life of Pets. And this we then decided it would be a good idea. I used to live right by the Intrepid. We thought it would be a good idea to go and smoke a J outside of the Intrepid. Granted, it's my first time doing any sort of mushroom psychedelic. So I don't eat anything the whole day. I'm like, I heard an empty stomach is good. So I go. We smoke this joint. We're walking back. I've eaten nothing. I remember saying to Jasper, like, oh, my stomach feels kind of weird. Next thing I remember, I'm on the side of the road. Like, he's, like, slapping my face. This woman's like, we got to call him an ambulance. He's like, no, he's super drunk. Don't worry. It's totally fine. I wake up the next morning with, like, a huge black eye. From him slapping you? Yes. Oh, wait. No, you you, you missed the... Oh, yeah. I I, I had blacked out. Like, I had literally passed out in the middle of the street from not eating anything. Jasper, like, drags me by my feet to the side. And it's like waking me up. And the next morning I was like, mom, dad, I got a little too high and I passed out. And my dad was like, you're an absolute idiot. Like you have a job. We also had the biggest eye. show of our life to date that day. But it was cool. Then I had the black yeah, eye. You definitely looked gnarly. Um, yeah. It the was. The next day when he woke up. Yeah. Right. Wow. Exactly. Man. So that was my first mushroom experience. Bowery Ballroom. Oh, yeah. We were 17 and we had sold out Bowery Ballroom. And right. Sawyer shows up. There's a massive black eye. We're like. It was lit though. Yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah, that's badass. Pretty badass. Yeah, but then everybody was like, "What happened?" <laughs> and I was what like, did you say? "I was like, um, so. yeah, I just I passed out. Like I had gone too hard. Like Jasper and I were on a run. <laughs> I passed out. Yeah, <laughs> that's even more badass." Meanwhile, I had like pad thai that we had ordered in, but waited to eat till after it had worn off, so we didn't like puke. Or <laughs> that's what we thought, and it was like at home waiting for me. That's nice. And beef pad thai. Fuck yeah, I had pad thai last night. It's so Pat C. U. is the one though. Yes, he was great. Drunken noodle. I'll yeah, actually yeah. now go for yes noodles. Yeah, I like the big. I like the big noodles. Which yeah. should, do you guys have like a t- go to Thai spot then in the city? No, they're all the same. Okay, it's yeah. all just slop. All right. <laughs> Kill you. Kill you. Last night was Nana Thai. Nana. Nah, they're all just thai. slop. Yeah. Is there a to Soother? I'm gonna shout out Soother. Thirteenth nice. and second. Oh yeah, that place. I've that had place that. is really good. Really good. It was good. my birthday dinner before we saw House of Gucci. Yes. If you remember correctly. Yeah. Kind of hungry right now, honestly. I know. Oh, I gotta. I actually have to jump. Yeah, let's let's. We let's, can wrap it up. We've can I, can I quickly shout fun. someone out? Yes. Bro, shout course. out whoever you want. Get it all off your chest. Ruby Weingartner, my 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 beloved sister, yes. is the number one fan and listener of this here podcast. Are you serious? Oh. She is wow. seeing Ruby. She, Ruby. She you is rule. seeing Sass in Madison tomorrow. Nuh-uh. Yeah, she does she live out there? And, and Francis. And Francis. You know, it doesn't. I, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention Jesus. Francis. Yeah. And I'll just be there. Um, And so I just wanted to shout her out because I love her. And uh, yeah, she's a big fan. She okay. cried when we said that you guys talked. Yeah, she did. We, really? Can we give Ruby, uh, Ruby, you have a pass to the green room. Come say hi. Yeah, oh, that and, would be um, great. Come hang out with we're us. Lying at the we're, room. we're very well behaved. We don't do be a bunch anything. of dudes. Like, I'm Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually Ruby. <laughs> Rubes. Yo, what's good? I'm Ruby. <laughs> Call me Rubes. In fact, it's going to be very disappointing. Maybe we don't want to. Do you guys ever get that? Do you guys ever have people try and come back to the green room? No. Actually, I don't think. That's I like know. a new thing that we've been getting. Kavon's getting on the mic. Oh no! Yeah, there was this one time at Irving Plaza. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> take a load off. Take a load off. <laughs> so <laughs> at Irving Plaza, Sky Vaughn's here now. I was uh, we were all we're, you guys were opening for Neon Trees, and so we had like the bottom kind of green yeah. room, and then they're upstairs or whatever. And so there was this girl who was in the crowd, and like you have to kind of enter through the crowd to get to the green room. It's like faster than like going up this back stairs or whatever. So there was this girl who every time I walked past would like grab me and try to get me to get her in the green room and she was like it's doing a lot and uh doing too much doing too much yeah yeah yeah, yeah. most yeah the <laughs> most is that it and, or did she did she get in um no the security guard told her to stop okay thank Damn. you security thank you security. Gotcha, security wait quickly not it's cool not, that you not guys a green room story but we played irving plaza when we headlined and i remember i was watching like the crowd before we were going to go on. And these girls up front like pulled out white claws as soon as they got there. Yes. The security guard kicked them out right away. Damn. And as they're leaving, my girlfriend is coming in. Like after having like hung out with her friends pre-gaming. 
and they were like and she was like what's going on like why are you outside and they were like oh we got kicked out and my girlfriend's like oh i'm dating sawyer come right on in <laughs> and then, then, like, and she like had no ticket no and like, no like reason of entry for these people but somehow she miraculously she did yeah she got them like back inside it's all about confidence oh, Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's like the name of this app gonna be like I'm, what do you guys want to name? I don't it? know. Like I'm just thinking about like what was like the line. Yeah, like oh, is the, the fast crowd. Yeah, yeah. like fast that. Fast good. crowd. Fast we could go. That's tough. Through All the good. Episode. Is there any kind of Justin Bieber bait that we could throw out there to try yeah. and like get you him? Collab with who? <laughs> <laughs> dream collab. Dream blunt rotation Punch with who? Got DM by who? <laughs> <laughs> just like. Early we what? <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Thank you guys. For Thank you for having us. You guys were on. What an honor. On. So it's much an success honor. to you guys. Thank you boys. Yeah, you guys crushed it. Thank you, man. All right. Thank you guys. We'll we'll be back on Monday. Oh, come see me and Francis in Madison, Wisconsin, tomorrow and Friday and Saturday. Tickets at francisells.com or lilsasquatchwebsite.com. Goodbye. Yes. Bye. Thank okay. you. Wow. So I could think back to days where I couldn't want more than just happiness. Remember being in that kid on the first day that always hated that it was the first day. But that's the day that we met and it's kind of crazy How quickly we made amends Cause we got so caught up And we kept having fun And we kept growing up And I say you made me who I am Remember taking a drive to the mountains Remember singing the stupid songs And remember dancing around the apartment laughing Cause I couldn't dance a bit But we dance all night long We dance all night